All right, I sent that, Eddie, but then you're good. All right, cool. Good to go, Dave? Yep. All right. All right, Bing Bang, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and company. Uh, Dave, before we get kicked off here, let's talk about the bird dogs. Yeah, so um, let me, am I loud enough here? Is this mic good? Let me get closer. Uh, I wear bird dogs now 24 7, pretty much. Shorts, joggers, all of it. Um, and look, it says focus on joggers and pants. So those are in season right now. Uh, everything's in season in Miami, although it is unseasonably cool here, so it is pant weather. Um, I wear them all the time. Super comfortable. Looks good. Next age. Go to birddogs.com. Enter promo code Dave, my name. They'll throw in eight. They've changed it. No longer the whistle football, which is my arch enemy. A free Bird Dogs Patagonia style beanie. I haven't seen these yet. I'd like to see them. Um, birddogs.com, promo code Dave, and boom, a free Bird Dogs Patagonia style beanie with your pair of Bird Dogs. You won't take these off. I don't say I wear them 24 7. So, uh, Bird Dogs is a great sponsor. Do we have a picture of this beanie or what? I, I have one. Uh, here, let me turn the camera on and actually, yeah, I'll throw one Austin. He can. You can show it in the camera quick. Let's go, Austin. Flip it around, oh. too. Show the logo. I don't consider that a beanie. I like that hat. That's just a winter hat to me. What do you mean you don't consider that a beanie? A beanie I, does not, to me, have, like, a, pawn, a pom-pom on it. That's just a winter. A beanie is like uh, like a hipster. Like, uh, like the cornucopia that hangs off your head? Uh, maybe a little bit or just, like, I don't know. A beanie is like a girl wearing like a little beanie. It's like a tight little hat. It doesn't have the pom pom. To me, at least, it doesn't. I like that hat though. It's just yeah, not, it's nice. to me that's not a beanie, but I do like it. I hate the cornucopia. You like that look? I, you're saying the thing that floats down? Yeah, when that just fucking just yeah, trails I, I down to the. I, no, I think it looks good on girls. Yeah. Yeah, on guys, I'm saying. No, not so much. Well, I mean, that's not your. I mean, that Eddie and that look do not go together. That's I, for sure. I, yeah, I just, I don't know. You see, Gaz, is you a cornucopia guy? Yes, he is. He wears, he tries to do that. Oh. No, but I was just thinking about when you just said you're not a, a, a that kind of hat guy. What kind of car are you buying? Oh, me. I, this is a topic. I, I told Dave. I just, uh, I just. Ted, he's yeah. buying a Tesla. I knew that. I didn't realize there are different kinds of Teslas, to be honest. Yeah. Does that fit Eddie? Like, I think what Eddie is your voice, Paul? Your, Paul? Paul sounds like he's like, what's going on there? Is it, you, you sound like I, I don't think know he joined on his phone because there's his phone's in the Zoom and he's in the Zoom. Yeah, it's weird sounding. No, I was see Eddie as a Tesla guy, but he did tell me that a couple of weeks ago. I was in Chicago. Yeah, I, I just uh, I, I looked at a couple and then, like I said, like I couldn't get over how much value like a lot of them lose. And I know the Tesla's going to lose value, too, but it's. It seems to hold it more. So that was we that had was a, a long discussion factor. about cross country trips and like how that would work out. Yeah, it's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. So we'll see how it goes. But no, I, I don't think anyone saw it coming. I, I didn't see it. I mean, I just hopped in one. It's pretty fucking nice. So you, that is like a step away from the cornucopia, which I've never heard of. I just call it like a hipster beanie. But that Tesla driving cornucopia wearing. No, that's not true. Could be. You think? The, no, I. If I wear a cornucopia, I, I, I fire me. Well, um, I mean, I think a year ago, if someone said you're going to buy a Tesla, same true, deal. true. But I, like I said, everyone like thinks they're like crazy expensive. The, Elon was smart; he made some for like the common guy. So there's a. I did think they were crazy expensive. That was my first thing. It's like, oh, we're paying you too much. No, it's a common misconception. Um, but anyways, a couple guests coming on later. We got Greg Olson joining us. We're going to talk some football. Uh, Alex Bennett's joining us. You got some things for her. Credit to me for getting the guest. Well, I called you Friday. You denied my call. So I, it's hard to book guests with you are if you, you don't answer my calls. Are you coming Saturday? Yeah. You are? Were you going to tell yeah. me that? Yeah, I was going to tell you after. I didn't know. Okay. If, all right. All right. Yeah. Good yeah. Thank yeah. Thanks. I'm going to come. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. What's uh, so People tell- seem to think we just have an unlimited guest list. I do not. So like Paul before is like how many people? It's like I didn't know John Kelly's coming. I didn't like I so I got to figure all this out. What are we going to for the people so they can know? Going to Pegasus Saturday. Mm-hmm. We got a sweet um, mattress Mac who I've never met. We're gonna have him on the podcast. That's why you're coming. Elio's coming down. Um, Jane Motion who is a friend of mine. Her dad's a trainer. She's coming. She's friends with Sylvana. So we got a pretty decent sized crew. It'll be fun. No, I don't yeah, have I'm unlimited excited. tickets. People think you got a limited tickets, huh? No, the suite holds 12. 
and we're probably at like too many. Hmm. But it's one of those things I think, you know, someone can get a normal ticket and then just waltz into the suite after. Okay. That's nice. It's a nice venue. Huh? You, you go to Pegasus every year with him, no? Every year with Elio, yes. Yeah, nice. we have a great setup. We're going to be like right on the finish line in a private suite TV. It'll be great. Excited. Awesome. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, also, like, you're just uh, – you're becoming a Miami event guy. You went to the fucking uh, – or was that game in Florida State? Was that in Tallahassee? No, that was that was in Miami. Oh, okay. How was that? Tallahassee's like seven hours from here. Yeah, it's far. Panhandle. Uh, it was fun. I haven't been to a college basketball game in forever. I've talked about it. I've been fully, like, embraced, and I guess talked a little bit about Greg, into, like, Miami culture. Uh, and it's all through Danny Boy Kane. But there, there is a degree of disconnect where people like from Miami don't seem to get that I'm through Danny Boy Kane. So I told, I said, I met Mario Cristobal and you know, I was introduced as this is Dave Portman. He's, he's going to be a huge factor for the program. I'm like, what? <laughs> this was at the stadium. <laughs> yeah. At the game. Yeah. Cristobal was there. Uh, so it was who a great game. They, they lost, they were down 28. They lost by one. They missed a shot at the buzzer to win. And who told you, who told him that? Who was the introducing person? It was, like I'm with these Ruiz guys who are That's right. the the life wallet and doing NIL deals, and there was another guy who's part. There's I'm just part of the program now. <laughs> what did um? How did that go? Because Danny Danny Boy Kane, he had you over the barrel. He's setting up these meetings, and he uh, I, whatever Danny Boy Kane tells me to do, I do. Period. That's all it is. So it went well with the Ruizes. You like them? Yeah, I only met him briefly. Uh, but the game was fun. It was a good game. Again, it, 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 you can tell my age. Like, I've gone to some NBA games. It, it Really, they are young looking. It's like, you know, the college, when you're right there, it's like, oh, these are like just kids playing this game. It struck. I, I, love, the, um, I love the kid who was talking shit to you the whole time. Yeah, he's good. He's funny. Who is it? What? He's just like some, his dad. I don't know where he something. came from. And obviously, Silvana went to Florida State. Yeah. And she takes that shit. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. She takes it very seriously. Mm -hmm. But she didn't even know they were playing until I'm like, do you want to go to the game? But once she was aware they were playing, it was like life or death. Like she was mad at me during the game for rooting for Miami because she thought it was disrespectful. She had a good moment. She had the, uh, the that down That was a good year. moment for her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she even realized the gravity of the moment. Like she definitely doesn't really know how big of a deal Mario Cristobal. Like she doesn't know that. But mm -hmm. to, to give him the, the you down and be caught on TV, that was a good moment for her. That was a good moment. Her shirt was awesome, too. She, 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 she they nice told outing. I got a call that she couldn't wear the shirt before the game because she posted it. And, like, A-Rod's friend who helped get the tickets, like, she can't wear that. I'm like, well, I don't think we can go to the game then. Like, I'm not going to tell her not to wear the shirt. It's like, yeah. I'm wearing my Miami. She's wearing – and I get it because they do – like – when I went to the game with Robert Kraft, you're not going to wear an opposing jersey. When I went to the game, the Eagles game, Eagles-Patriots with Jim Cramer, he's like, you can't wear Patriots into the booth. I made a split shirt. So if you sit in seats that were given to you by the school or the team, it is frowned upon to wear the enemy, especially when the shirt is the Seminole guy choking the Sebastian, the Hurricane. So I get it, but there was no way that was flying. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's like the graphic one. Someone tweeted it, the guy sucking the duck's dick. It's not like that was all over the top. Yeah, that was that was a little much, I would say. Um, what what are you gonna? I mean, it's tough for you though. You got some people buttering you up. Leonard Hamilton offering some corn pudding. That's I, I mean, saw that's, that. Yeah, I don't know if that was him or what. I like he. I didn't see him at all at the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen. I'm in Miami. I've always liked the Hurricanes. Let's just clarify that. Like, people know when I started the Pick'em podcast, oh, no, the Barstool Power Hour, when it was me and then Leo and McShay, our, our song that I put in to start it was It's All About the You. So I do like Miami. Boston is not a college sports town. You don't grow up with college sports. I grew up, Miami was awesome. So I did like Miami. But make no mistake, if Michigan plays Miami, I'm rooting for Michigan to kill them. That's just a fact. It's almost like the Bills-Patriots thing to a lesser level because I'm far more of a Patriot fan than I am Michigan. But Yeah, and I think it's more acceptable too. Like I, I mean, Buffalo's so damn lovable, but at the same time, they're in your division. I don't, I don't know if you I, get enough shit for that. No, I, here's the thing, Eddie, and you know nothing about this. 
we've been <laughs> so good for so long that yeah. it, I don't really view them as a rival. Like, obviously, they're better than us right now, and this could change at, if we – but there, there hasn't been it. And even the way we lost to them this year, it's like, okay, we weren't even the same fucking stratosphere as this team. So I just don't have any animosity. How can we, if you play a team 100 times and you beat them 100 times in a row and you have six Super Bowls, I, I just – I don't have any hate in my heart for them. How can I have hate in my heart – for maybe the Jets, because of Mancini and Belichick being there, but they're so bad. How can you have hate in your heart for any of these teams? So once they win, you're going to be like, I'm tired of Buffalo. That's my prediction. I, I'm not at the point yet of, like, long-suffering fan like you. And I'm not trying to put – it's like we had so much success. I'm not – like, obviously, I was upset that the Patriots lost, but I get over it quick. It's like, okay, I mean, we still have had this run that is – I can still feel it. You know, I'm not I'm not there. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could accept. I mean, I wouldn't – like, I wouldn't have – I mean, I don't know. Like, would it be that weird if I wore a Pirates hat? I don't I – don't, I, probably not, right? Well, I don't I, – I don't, I don't wear – You don't wear their like gear. This. Yeah, but no, let, let's say the Bears – you have a blood feud with the Packers, right? Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. like – if the Lions made a run, would you, would you like be? Oh no, I don't want the Lions to win. No, I guess that's a good comparison because there is there is a lovable aspect of the Lions fans too about how they're like somehow we're miserable as fuck and they're like even more miserable. Than yeah, we are. like I but I've never I considered like Buffalo a prime rival of us. Like even when they were good with the K gun and Jim Kelly, we were awful. We were like zero and yeah. sixteen. So we've just never been good at the same time except now yeah no that's that's fair i guess I, I guess he got me um what about what do you think about danny boy kane he turned down the life wallet job he, honor integrity danny boy kane i mean i'm not i don't even feel comfortable talking about it because he said no more questions at this time and he's not going to discuss it anymore yeah there is no more question i did see him respond to a question though right after i was i was confused but you could this he's there's little things that get me with Danny Boy, and again, this I've already said it, but when Meatloaf died, he's like, oh, this is terrible, Meatloaf. I love Meatloaf. And somebody said, uh, sorry for your loss, Danny. And he's like, thank you. And people just started like doing it with Meatloaf. He's just, there's little things with Danny Boy. Uh, I also saw he did a double. He, he gave an RIP uh, Louis Anderson as well. So yeah. he was, he was all, for, all for the IRPs. Um, so what's going on with this hit piece? So, uh, I don't know. I, I got the same thing I got before and I, I knew they were working on another one. I was hoping maybe they just would never get enough evidence, but Julia Black has it pinned to her Twitter profile. So, uh, and then out of the blue, it's like a gut punch. It's like, Hey, here's a million accusations. We're getting ready to publish it. Um, and basically like 24 hours. I was a more prepared, so the initial shock hits you, and it's like, who are these girls? What are they talking about? And luckily, I was able to figure out who both of they were. Like, one of them said she had a mini schnauzer. It's like, that's how she got my attention when she DM'd me. It's like, who the fuck is a mini schnauzer? I literally went through just my list, everyone on my phone, Snapchat. I'm like, no, 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 and I saw her. I'm like, this girl has a mini schnauzer. And I was able to go back, and thankfully, I had some DMs. The other girl I knew for a while and uh, I had all the receipts, just like last time. So we sent it, and now I don't know what they're. They were getting ready to drop this thing Thursday at 12. It is now, as we're doing this, uh, Tuesday at what, 11.30? I don't know what they're going to They basically, our lawyer is like, sent the thing. He's like, please confirm you're not going to publish this. We didn't hear back for a couple days. And they wrote back, I think, Saturday or Sunday, like, we won't confirm that. Our policy is we will work on the story till it's done. So essentially, they're just going to keep throwing as much mud against the wall and hope eventually they make it vague enough. They find somebody I don't have DMs for. They just want to publish. It has nothing to do with integrity honor. Like one of my lawyers is not like in this field. He's new to it. And he's just a lawyer on like defamation and what can. And he looked at what I sent him. He's like, there's no way they're going to publish this ever. Like, you have so much evidence that what they're saying is not true. It's like, they'll never do it. The other lawyer who is more familiar is like, no, they're going to do it. They don't care. 
Like this is just, they are trying to get clicks, revenue, and they hate me. So I'm sure it's going to be published at some point uh, in some version of it. And we'll go through the same shit we went through last time. Um, so are you anticipating, I mean, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as big, right? I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. Like, so I don't know. I mean, obviously they tried to defame me and make me sound like the worst human ever. It's crazy because there's no even accusation. Like one of the girls that's basically like just five years after the fact, she's looking back. She's like, yeah, it's like, I, it's nuts. Um, I have no idea. The, I'm sure the people who don't like me, the Minka kinds of the world, will be like, great reporting. And the people who believe me and act, it actually listen to the truth will be like, this is garbage. And the people in the middle who evaluate it for what it is will side with me. As I said last time, there is nobody in the world who will look at the evidence with an open mind and be like, Julia Black was right. Nobody. Because it's the, the evidence is overwhelmingly in my favor. What was the uh, the tweet about the king hater? What was that about? What you had what? a new find a new finding that the mother is a king hater or the daughter is or something like or, there was something you tweeted that you found out a king that someone hater? was a king hater. No, I think you just misspelled it. He meant like a long time hater of Barstool, oh, but he, okay. he misspelled it king, like ah, autocorrect okay. or something. Right. It was so, the the sibling. The or, book, yeah, yeah, the book, the book no. that I've written. That is that what he's talking about? I think he's talking about family tweet about how somebody the, the one i'll pull it up oh, oh oh one of the girls her sister fucking hates me and hates barstool and kareem actually has like probably like 30 to 40 over the last couple years of just hating barstool hating so it probably sucks for her that i fucked her sister a lot <laughs> yeah i would say i would say uh, so why did her sister come out? Like she doesn't like. I have you no anymore, idea. Uh, I have no idea, Eddie. Eddie, this girl. I knew this girl for three years. Like oh, wow. we never dated, but we'd hang out. I don't know every six months, a year. Like we hung out enough where she actually had a mole. Her this girl, one of her friends, tipped me off and was like, "Just so you know, th this girl is trashing you." And I'm like, no, it's not her. It's like, she'd never do that. I, I'm, I've known her for a long time. We're on good terms. I reached out to the girl. This girl previously had reached out to me to be like, I'm sorry of all the shit you're going through. Like reporters reach out to me. I'm not talking to them. It's bullshit. She flipped. Wow. It's crazy. The whole thing's fucking crazy. And I know. Now, I don't like saying this. Do you ever look at the Barstool Reddit page? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's. Certainly good topics down there for the show. So, so I'll yes. look at it. I look at it time to time. The people who are in those people, they're, they're the worst. They don't like me. They're fucking losers. And you always got to run how, how old. Like all they do is trash Barstool while they're on a Barstool Reddit page. It's bananas. But <clears throat> there's people who seem to think we shouldn't talk about. Like they're so delusional. Like nobody cares about this. If, nobody would know about it if Dave didn't talk about it. And what planet are you talking about? Like, honestly, what planet? Yeah, I don't know. Something over there kind of flipped, it felt like. Like, it used, there used to be, like, a lot of funny stuff. Now it's just kind of, it's not, it's not really oh, like they're, that. Oh, they're haters. They, they, but, I mean, there's always a different. I agree with you. I, the, the reason I go a lot of times is I can catch up quickly. They, like, talk, it's almost like a recap yeah. of what's going on. But the people, if you go look at what they're saying, they are. Like, it, it's one of those things you'd always like to meet the people who are saying it. These yeah. people are so stupid and out of touch that all they do is trash Barstool and people who support Barstool and then send, spend every waking minute analyzing Barstool. You guys are the biggest losers there are. If you don't like us, go away. Yeah, don't let I, the I, door hit you on the back. I could give a fuck less. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not all of them, and like subreddits are generally like if you have a fan base, it's good. Like it's a spot for people to fucking talk about shit. But I don't know. It, it seems to have gotten pretty toxic. Oh, they're there. they're there. So every listen, and not the Rappaport thing because Rappaport said all like Barcel people suck. I uh, when I used to do this, this isn't new. Every like ever since I started Barstool, probably like once a year, I'd have to take people like that the people who worship me but pretend they don't, 
put them on my knee and spank them. Be like, get in line, buddy. Like, wake up. Like, I'd have no time for you. That's who these people are. And they may not worship me, but they love Barcelona. They hate me. I don't really give a fuck. Dave changed. Dave says this. Dave did this. You fucking get in knees and suck my cock if I saw you in the street. So shut up. Yeah, well. Put on your knee and spank them. Like little babies. Spank, spank, spank. We should start getting some of these. We should. That's a good segment. Let's go into the Reddit. Find the, the, the biggest haters. Let's get them on here. Let's see how they deal with me up front and personal. Something tells me they turtle. Oh, little turtle. They all turtle. Put them on my knees. Spank, spank, spank. All right, we'll start reaching out. We'll That's a good look- segment. Yeah, we'll start looking in the archives. Put we'll them see. on. You- put their face. Let's see what these fucking mongrels look like. Do you, do you think anyone will accept? Yeah, maybe a couple idiots. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll look into that. Um, put them on my knee. Put a little bottle in your mouth. Spank them. So, they, so they've been pissing you off a little bit, huh? No, it's not you piss off. It's, it, it, it's primarily this topic. The only oh, Dave, topic. Dave's the only fucking one who cares about What are you talking about? I'm getting fucking accused of being basically a rapist. Get the fuck out of here. You want me to ignore that? Mm-hmm. Idiots. Uh, well, you know, we'll see what happens with the hit piece. And uh, on a I want to spank note. him. I want to burp him, Eddie. All right, we'll try to get a hold of someone there. Uh, Trailer Park got new teeth. That was a nice story. Great story. I felt weird talking about it. I had, and people, I had no intention of bringing this up. It's like, he got great teeth. Daniela, who helps me a ton, she was like moved by the story, so she had the video. But um, yeah, it, it, it was like, honestly made me feel good to see how happy he was. And it's a life-changing gift, so good for him. Yeah, it was nice to see. He was, uh, I mean, he was crying afterwards. I, that's, yeah. uh, I wonder I mean, what the first thing he, he ate I was crying when I said I was going to do it. Yeah. I wonder what he ate first. Um, did you see that SNL sketch? Saturday Night Live? Yeah, that, the, do you, the, they, they, like, they did first take. They spoofed first take. No. There was a guy, they, Will Arnett, I believe it was. They like kicked it over to like a gambling guy, and he was wearing a goldfish around his neck. Oh no shit! So we think that's the gambling goldfish, or he just I don't know. Where or Randolph or what? Yeah, I, I had some people did tweet at me, and they thought it might have been you, but I don't. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Yeah. So check that out. Um. I saw there was the uh, the top ten highest pizza reviews yep. released. Yeah, Did and that's I, I, they're all great spots on there. It's if you're above nine, they're almost interchangeable to a degree. And there's different eras, there's different times I've gone. I'm a harder scorer now, but yeah, I saw it. Is there any ones that you would like change around? Like I feel like Pepe's I, Chestnut Hill. I, shouldn't I don't. Be. I don't. I don't have it in front of me. So okay, let me try to pull it up. Can you pull it up, Kareem? All right, cool. Um, I, I feel like Pepe, I think Pepe's Chestnut Hill might have been one or two. No, DeFara was one. Yeah. There we go, DeFara. Okay, so looking at this, and again, it's mood, it's whatever. Sally's is too low. Sally's is basically my number one of all time. So uh, Sally's is too low. I don't. Oh, Luigi's deserves to be there. Lazarus is too high. Angelo's may be slightly too high. So my, here, here's, if I'm looking at this right now, here's my top three. And, and you can argue till their cows come up. Sally's. John's a bleaker. Lou Collie. Those are the three. And maybe knocking on the door Luigi's. But Sally's, uh, Sally's, John's a bleaker, and Lou Collie. Those are, those are my three favorite of all time. Hey, Dave, You're not where, gonna let where would th- some of the originals drop? Remember Monty's was your thing for years. Where would they be now? Well, Monty's, I gave it 10, but it's a fake 10. Monty's is like a low eight. I love bar pie. I love bar pie. Those are low eights. 
What about Town Spa? Low eight. I like Monty's more than Town Spa, but low eight. Surprised there was no uh, D- Delusia's no uh, recency bias there, huh? Delusia's great. It's yeah. uh, to me a rung below those. It, like I would go mid nine, low nine. Okay. Um, if you guys want right. to look at the the goldfish picture here, it's an I, interesting literally update. Rudolph, a Rand- Rudolph Randolph. Randolph. Yeah, he has to be wearing that because of me. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't we make that? Like, isn't that ours? Well, I mean, I got somewhere. That's def- This guy is 100% being me. <laughs> Why would you wear that? I mean, that's <laughs> fucking a tribute to me. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't see it then. I may do a new top 10 just because of that. You should. You should release a new top 10. Um, what do you think about the win looking to sell uh, their sports betting app? Eddie, I have been, obviously all of the gambling space is getting murdered. Our stock's down a million percent. DraftKings down a million percent. Rust Street's down a million percent. What I have said has not changed at all from day one. We got caught up when everything went high. We're getting caught up with them going low. We are in a different business model. They are burning hundreds of millions of dollars, advertising, promos, customer acquisition. We have never played that game. We are a solvent, make money business. Penn has the casino business, makes money. The sports gambling business, we're not losing. We're making now, we're making, okay? So once Wall Street wakes the fuck up, they're gonna see we our model is the right one. That's good, win getting out, Good. This is what we're saying is going to happen. It's going to consolidate. People are going to go away. And we are going to sit here with all our ammo that we have not spent yet while these other companies are bleeding. And we are going to be in a spectacular position. Listen, I obviously root for Penn. I have stock in Penn. I want a yacht party. But the other companies keep saying we're going to make all this shit. They keep posting the, oh, we'll make money in 2023, 2025. We're saying the same thing from day one. Our message has not changed. Not sustainable what they're doing, sustainable what we're doing, and the facts are bearing it out. If you are a pen shareholder and nobody, listen, I'm, I'm overdraft on my account like every two days because pen keeps dipping and everything is tied into that. I don't even know how it works. So nobody cares about Penn stock more than me, but you got to believe, you got to believe. That's all I'll say about that. And that's a good sign. Win is saying what I said. I have a million rants saying this is not sustainable. This will not work. That's the first domino in Wall Street for a while was ignoring the signs and just stocks go up. You never have to stop spending if the stock goes up because your company's going up. You can use the stock as leverage, collateral. Well, Wall Street has said enough, make money, stop burning money, and these companies now are dying. So good for us, good for us. This is good for us. So you said more ammo. You're saying there's other, there's other moves to be made here for Penn? You got we other tricks up your sleeve? We haven't spent yet. We bought the score and that's it. Like the amount of money that is still being spent to acquire customers, ads, all that, promos, all that, it's not sustainable. We haven't played that game. Our promo is we give you a sweatshirt. It's a different game. So, but if we get into that game, then aren't we just doing their model or? No, because it's one thing to do that game when there's, let's say, 10 people playing that game. When there's now only a handful and they're out of money, the cost of advertising, everything goes way down. So if you had to spend a hundred million on advertisers to get any impact, now you may only have to spend 100000 to get the impact because the competition has disappeared. All right, I got a few more questions, but I think Greg's going to be here on in a second, so we'll, we'll come back to this after Greg. Um, before we get to Greg, though, uh, what did you say, Kareem? Okay. Cool. You want to do 1-800-Flowers real quick, Dave? Let's do 1-800-Flowers. Let's go. Belt. What do you say? Yeah. I was... Uh, well, uh, uh. This Valentine's Day it pl- pays to plan ahead with 1-800-Flowers.com. First dibs on great deals for the best selection of Valentine's Day's roses, guaranteed delivery. Don't wait. 
Up your love game today with the biggest and brightest rose at 1-800-Flowers. Right now, 1-800-Flowers has an amazing offer for my listeners. Get 24 assorted roses for $39.99. Upgrade to 24 roses for $10 more. Unbelievable offer from 1-800-Flowers. 24 assorted roses, $39.99. Upgrade to 24 roses for $10 more. I always forget Valentine's Day. Put a note. Do it. Talk about 1-800-Flowers bouquet you received. These guys one day will learn that I'm just going to read whatever they put. I haven't received the flowers yet. It's not Valentine's Day yet. I did it last year. They look great last year. Full spe- Whether it's a full spectrum of assorted roses, timeless red roses, can't go wrong. 1-800-Flowers, all roses from 1-800-Flowers, picked at their peak, cared for every step of the way. To order 24 assorted roses, go for $39.99 or upgrade to 24 24- Red roses for only 10 bucks more. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Click the radio icon. Enter the code Eddie. That's 1-800-Flowers.com. Code Eddie. You should run it, Eddie. It's your ad. It expires Friday. Go get it. 1-800-Flowers.com. Enter code Eddie. I mean, you're yeah. going to need flowers, so it's the way to go. you got to get flowers. Mm-hmm. Dave does there have some is. flowers coming. That yep. is, Can he hear us? Greg, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? That's a beanie. What he's wearing is a beanie. As opposed to what? Like, yeah, show, 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 the, bird show dogs. the bird dog's hat. They call this a beanie. I said it's not a beanie. Show the bird dog I consi- beanie. I consider myself a beanie aficionado, so I'll be okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Do you consider that a beanie? Yeah, I call them all beanies. Oh, well. I call, I call that a beanie. A lot of what? people, why? What do you call them? How, how does, that's just a winter hat. Yeah, I call them all beanies. So you got the uh, you, that, how you got you like the snowboarder one right now, Greg. Why you don't? You, are you not calling it a beanie because it has the pom pom? I think so. Yes, that's fair. I could see that. That's fair. Okay. Well, that's welcome, fair. Greg. Speaking I, and not welcome. that he's dark. Not 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 that he's Doctor Fashion after that little back and forth we had on those shoes, which I noticed you got rid of. I got. Yeah. Can we can we talk about the shoes for a minute? Sure. It's a terrible look. First of all, it's it's good to know that Portnoy shares your text messages. For anyone out there who ever texts with him, just make sure you know anything you put in text could be shared on Twitter. I feel like I have a fair barometer of what can go public and what can't. Let it, let's see the picture again so. of him. And this is a look that all you guys think you can get away with and you can't. Dude, those shoes, those shoes are fire. Get the picture up. I'm waiting and waiting to see it. I know I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at. I mean, first of all, can we talk about the suit? I like the suit. So you don't. So is it that you don't like the white sole at the bottom? Yes, I hate. Is that it. what it is? Yep. Now and so and, know, and Sanchez looks like he's wearing sneakers. Yeah. So my. So I know a lot of guys wear like sneakers and they got the white soles, right? That those are dress shoes. Like they are laced up leather like true dress shoes that just happen to have a white sole oh, bottom all right that's so that the white i don't like and me i thought it was sneakers because sanchez no. nice. i i i hate the sneakers and my guy bob Kraft does it all the time maybe you're older and bad feet i hate the sneakers with the nice suit it ruins the nice suit i so if i'm on air like for a show like that where i know i'm going to be standing all the whole you know from my feet to my head i'll wear dress shoes with a suit but when i call games and i'm in the booth and you can, at the most, twice a game, see from my chest up. I wear sneakers, comfortable. I'm on my feet for six hours. Well, I'm that's fine. You don't see. I, I, yeah. That's fine if you don't see them. But if you see, do you agree that like what Sanchez is doing and what a lot of guys are doing? It. What's the point of wearing a suit if you're going with sneakers? Yeah, I don't wear. I don't wear sneakers on air. I agree with you on that. If I'm wearing sneakers, it's because my feet aren't going to be on the show. If I'm, as you just saw in that picture, those I'm wearing dress shoes. Okay. So then we agree. We don't. I thought those were like sneakers. Nope. You nope. should have texted me. I would have sent you a nice close up, and then you could have reserved judgment. You were on the air, Greg. <laughs> Before we get into anything, and we have them on. Nobody knows this. Greg stole Mikey podcast. I knew uh, that. Indire- indirectly, yes. I don't even know at Barso. Let me give the thing. And I like my. I don't know Mikey that well, but Greg calls me up. And, and Greg and I always talk. He's, I, I would consider him, I've said this before, one of the legitimate friends I've met doing this. I like him. So he calls me, and he's, I don't know how much you want to say. It, so you, you can say none, whatever, but you're starting your own kind of company. Is that, like, public? Or are you fine with saying we haven't it? Announced, we haven't announced it yet, but in essence, yes. 
Yeah, so they're going to be in the podcast business and things like that. And, and Greg and I always talk about ideas and bounce things off each other. But he calls me and he's like, I got to tell you something before. Like, I don't want this to come across wrong. I think we're, we have a guy who works for you. And he's saying his name's like Mikey or something. I'm like, Mikey podcast? And I don't, you know, Eddie, I'm not like overly, I know who he is. His greatest claim to fame, lock up your merch closet, <laughs> is he stole fucking merch and got caught on camera doing it. But besides that, he's really well liked and you got a good guy and everyone likes him. And I'm always, somebody who's been with Barstool for a long ass time and they want to go try something else and they think they're ground floor. Like we were sad we lost him. Erica was sad. I think everybody was. So you got a good guy. But he calls me, he's like, I want to, before you hear anybody, like, apparently we took somebody from you. I'm like, really? Who? And it's Mikey. It's the other guy, Greg, who, who, what's, uh, fucking, Peter. What the fuck's his name? Morris. Peter Morris. He's like, do you know this Peter Morris who worked for Barstool? I was like, no. He was here for a cup of coffee. He's the one who poached Mikey. I have no problem with Mikey going, but this Peter Morris guy, you work here for a cup of coffee. And, I, and I'm going to say this. I don't, I could be wrong, Greg. When Eric is like, oh, we're going to really miss him. I'm like, I don't want to, but I think we could kill that. Like, I think if I call Greg, be like, you can't take him. I think you would have been like, all right, we'll back off. Yeah, so, so here, so what happened was, and the reason I placed that call, so, I didn't know who this person we were considering for the position. They didn't, Peter and, so, and the venture capital group that we're partnering with, they really headed up building out our team. So the first hire was like, all right, we got to bring in somebody who understands how to develop. And me and you have talked about my podcast idea yep. is and whatnot in the past. So trying to bring that to market, someone who understands growing it and building the brand of what it is, whatnot. So then later, like end of, was it last week or two weeks ago, they told us. It was they right told before us, the they, Patriots game. Yeah. Yeah, it was right before the, yeah. So two weeks ago. It was on, me and you had spoken the day before about a separate idea that we were kicking around. We talked for a while. And then I got an email that night that Mikey was going to join us. I was like, holy shit. If he walks into Portnoy's office right now, after I talked to him for an hour yesterday, Portnoy is going to be like, this son of a bitch is having a full conversation with me about, you know, kicking around ideas for a show and whatever. This would be so fun. And this motherfucker's stealing away. So I was like, all right, man, now that I know who this guy is and that he's coming from Barstool, like, I'm, I was like, out of just respect, I would hope someone would do that to me, right? Like once it all came together, just call it. And whether you liked it or you got mad or whatever, I had no control over. But like, I just thought it was professional as a friend to just be like, hey, dude, this happened. The dots got connected. He's joining us. I wanted you to hear it from me before you got the wrong impression. I just thought it was the right thing. And it was the right here we, thing. Here like we are. If I found that out after, I won't even know him because I don't even know if Mikey said. And it's weird. It's always weird in an industry like this. And I've talked to people and I know separate companies. Like if somebody, somebody wants to leave, I will never poach somebody from like a company that I have relationships with that are, are solid. Now, if that person wants to leave, I'll be like, if you're going to leave no matter what, like, okay, but I'm never going to proactively go into somebody I like and be like, let me take this guy from you. I would never do that. I won't want people to do it. If, in, to be honest, Greg, if you did that, like knowingly, I would hate you. But the way it came about, <laughs> I don't really have a problem with it. Yeah, the other it, guy, it, a little bit, I think it's a little weird, but I don't, I don't think we have really a great relationship with this Peter yeah. Morris guy. So yeah, I, I think it really came up indirectly. I don't think Mikey was a target. I think Mark, Mikey was someone that got reached out for direction we had we had conversations with a few other people and one of them we had offered the job to that person ended up for whatever reason backing out last minute so when we reopened like this pool of candidates to try to fill this spot i think mikey was seen as like a resource like hey are you aware of anyone whatnot and i think from that conversation the opportunity to join something from the ground up and whatnot was obviously what appealed to him but i again i just thought it was the right move that you knew wow. how it came together and you heard it from me and let the chips 100%, fall where they may. 100%. And I don't even know that if I, I am sort of disconnected. I just know a lot of people. And he did a lot. And he was here a long time. He's, but, he's yeah. by far one of the most helpful behind-the-scenes people we had. So you're getting a good and one. Greg, for Greg sure. stole him. Yeah. <laughs> Back at, for the sake of this pod, that should be the storyline. I stole <laughs> that, him. That, that you stole him. I will say, I don't – I feel like I never lose my guys or girls 
Like, I don't lose him. I guess I lost Cooper, but she got paid 60 mil over. That's the only thing. I, I don't interact. My guys, what? I can't believe how much money she makes. She makes a ton of money. It's unbelievable. She's also, I describe her as a female Rogan. I don't mean in their views, but she's that fucking big. Yeah. So, is, you know. is, was McAfee your guy? Yes. But McAfee wasn't a full-time employee. Like, McAfee... Right. One of the things I'll say about McAfee, and, and people always think I'm super sour on McAfee because he left is huge. I'm not. Like McAfee came to us already with like over a million followers on social media. He was huge in Indianapolis. As McAfee has said, as Pat, we we're the only ones that saw and we've always been good. Like, oh, this guy's fucking super talented. But McAfee wanted to do a million things. It was never going to work, I don't think. Well, it may be if we just decide we're not going to try to make a penny on McAfee. Like, but McAfee always had what it took. Now, he went, the only thing, there's a couple things I screwed up with McAfee. I put somebody on McAfee who, McAfee can be tough to deal with. I think he'd say that openly. And when I say tough to deal with, He's a bear. He always a million different ideas. There's a lot going on. He wasn't here. I don't mean that like it, it necessarily in a negative sense. You just, anybody who's super talented, it could be Alex, it could be anybody. The, the, a lot of hand-holding with deals and things like that. I didn't trust our sales because they got a lot going on. I put who I felt was one of my number one guys, Bubbly Gang, which I don't know if, how familiar you are, but it's a guy who's with me forever like came in and he he was our head of sales he was with me in milton we had been through the wars crazy dude crazy dude but i was like he's yours he's yours you deal with him that was a mistake in hindsight i end up having a major problem with bubbly gang bubbly game i think kind of poisoned mcafee and ended up going with mcafee they both left i haven't when i say bubbly gang was one of my close friends i haven't talked to him in since this happened and what was this yeah. eddie how long ago was this that was in 2018 fall of 2018 and not just because mcafee it's just like i i i consider my super loyal and if so it's very hard to get my inner circle he was there and then so that that mcafee thing it was a bunch of different factors really and but yeah. he always and the only thing i screwed up on my end with it and i won't do this again he went to Barstool School, is basically what he did. Like, we created this office, we paid, we did it, he studied, and then he was able to take all the people that we had hired and go with him, and he's smart. There's nothing wrong with that. He's very smart, he's made the right decision, he's killing it, um, but I won't do that. Even people always say, try to take credit, like, his show, how do you think he met Andy Hawk? How do you think that happened? Like, me. Like, almost everybody around them is Barstool people, like, Hawk, was also brilliant but i met him and we had them both on our uh, barstool college game day show so mcafee's yeah. brilliant but mcafee was going to be wildly successful irregardless of us he's that good of a talent so um i would yeah. i wouldn't say he's my guy when i say my guys i probably mean more no no big profile before they got to us like um, you know, Biz isn't my guy. Like, guys, it's different. It, it, there is a difference when you come to Barstool as a no-name versus already an established personality. Everything's Yeah, different. like Dion, right? Like Dion. He came 100%. here. He was Dion Sanders. Obviously, you guys work closely, your buddies, whatnot. His profile, I'm sure, has raised in certain demographics as a result of Barstool, but he was still Dion Sanders before Barstool. I get it. No, I think that's a fair, a totally fair assessment obviously McAfee is super talented and the show is great and I'm sure he benefited a lot from you guys but in his own right he's super good at what he does and we benefited from McAfee like yeah, he totally. brought a crowd totally. to us and and people totally. always think there's some my thing I'm a competitive person we're in the gambling space he works directly for a competitor so we are competing on that but what people I, I think I've said this before prior to McAfee getting that deal with FanDuel McAfee and I were talking about bringing him back into Barstool with Penn and his idea, those McAfee's, he's like, if I come back, I want to do a daily show with you. Like, we'll have, like, me and you do a show. It'll be gigantic. And then he got, as he put, a sweetheart deal 
from yeah. FanDuel that we didn't match in the market change. So there isn't that. The fact that I do compete with McAfee in gambling, when I know for a fact I taught McAfee how to gamble, like that's competitive stuff that just selfishly, it's like people should know that. Like he didn't yeah. know what a spread was and he'd admit it. McAfee actually, and people always bust my balls, he probably owes me 200 grand because the first time, <laughs> the first time I taught him to gamble was we were at Iowa and I'm betting, and this is before the gambling passed, and he's like, what's this gambling you're doing? And I'm like, well, I'm betting all this shit. He's like, double whatever you're betting. I had to call at the time, book illegal. I go, I need my available balance doubled. And they doubled it. And then I told McAfee how much I was gambling. He's like, oh, I don't want to bet that much. But if I increase my balance, I bet to my balance, no matter what. So if I was betting 50 grand a game, McAfee's like, bump it to 100, I'll split it. Then he didn't split it, and I got fucking killed. So whenever I say he owes me because of gambling, that's what I mean. But I don't hate Matt McAfee's super talented. He, I like McAfee. He, he deserves good. everything he gets. Yeah. Um, totally. I like him a lot. That is a misconception, I think, that people are like that I don't I'm, like I'm glad. Him. I feel like that was like a nice little session. I feel like we were able to get, get to the root of some of that and get that off your chest. I've said it a lot of times. I feel like people, but we are a competitor now, and there is that inherent – if you know, you know a thousand times more about a space than the other guy and it's lost, that's if I, McAfee would admit that. Like, I'm a degenerate. Dan, I can't use that word, but we, this is our space. I taught the guy out of yep. him. So, but he's, he would have been wildly successful no matter what. Speaking of that, what did you tell everybody you're bragging by? I don't have to tell everyone how good I am on Fox. That was your way of saying how good you are. No, that was. Did read the whole. Do you have the whole quote? Yeah, I have everything. Read the whole quote. I already read the whole quote. I never believe that you need to tell anybody how good you are. I think people know. I think our crew, honestly speaking, made an impact on the scene. I don't agree with go. that. Our crew. Our crew. Passing the ball. How did you make an impact on the scene? You don't think our crew was – you don't think we got positive buzz and people really like tuning into our games? Oh, no. I think you got great buzz. And I think you did a very good job. But I don't know that you impacted – like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think, mean necessarily like I don't think we invented the telestrator, right? We, we yeah. didn't we weren't John Madden reinventing how broadcast the, the question was for me to assess. It was by Marshan uh, from the post. And the, the question was, assess my rookie year in essence. And, and I say, I would say the same thing in open locker room when I was playing. Like if I need to stand up here and recite my stats and recite how my stats compete with other tight ends and where I am in the rankings, that's your job. Right. And meaning the, the sports media and whatnot, like that's your job. And I think. For anyone who tuned in to watch our game, it sounded a little different. Maybe it wasn't for everyone, but the way our crew put it together, the conversations that we had, the dynamic that we had of what we saw, how we described it, the words we used, the language we used, whatnot, I think to, not, again, not better or worse, was different than maybe some of the other broadcasts, and I think it stuck out to people. Did we revolutionize broadcasting? Obviously not. But did we bring a perspective that when you watched our game, it sounded maybe a little different and you were pointed out different things than some of the other crews? I think that's totally fair. Okay, I think that is fair. I mean, it's not surprising. Obviously, like, if we're just talking McAfee, I have a pretty good eye for, like, people who are good at what they're doing. I mean, you all, you, that's why we've been trying to get you the mix. Yeah. You're very good at talking and things like that. I am curious for a guy like you, Hall of Fame career. You're going to be a Hall of Famer, right? No. You're not. I think I'm borderline. I think the Super Bowl stuff hurt me, and I think my last two or three years of being hurt hurt me. If I could, if I would have stopped my career, if we would have won the Super Bowl in 15, and I would have stopped my career in 17, I think I would have had a good shot. So I think not winning the Super Bowl hurt me, and then going in essence 17, 18, 19, 20 with only one real season really put me behind. You know, my last couple of years, I had 200 yards, 200 yards. I, you know, I, I played not even half the seasons that that my 17 is where it went down I broke my foot and then from that point on the 10 years before that I never missed a game the four years after that I played half the snaps so my question is going to be football obviously great career if not hall of fame career announcing I always wonder this and there's obviously the a lot of ex guys you take it very seriously, obviously, and you can tell that you're proud, rightfully so, of how you're doing. How, how do you, are you just as competitive with this as you were with playing? Totally. Everything you just said about McAfee, and again, it's not a personal thing, but everything you just said to McAfee, 
I'm sure is how every guy in this world feels. No different than when you're a player, right? So like for comparison, when it was time to get a new contract, every player when they're playing says, I want, I want to be paid the highest. And every critic and every pundit is saying, well, they're offering you seven mil. I actually got in trouble, I think, on, on your show when I said I made the joke about tight ends do half. The, it, was on, it was either your show or, or Big Cat. And I said, um, you know, tight ends do, ha- do, do the work of a tackle and a wide receiver, and they pay us half. And like I was saying it in jest, and people are like, oh, well, seven million is not enough. Eight million is not enough. It has nothing to do with the money. It's that is the only benchmark in order to compete against your colleagues, right? So if you're a tight end or whatever it is, yes, is there a difference between making 9 million and 9.7 million? Well, if the guy who's number one makes 9.5, then yes, right? It's not the extra 600 grand. So there must be, though, a point, and maybe it's only quarterback, like where you get so comfortable in your own skin, though, because like you hear quarterbacks or other players, Brady has always been one, who will take less so he can get more like talent around him. I've never been the highest paid guy. Quarterback is different because they eat up so much of the cap, right? For Brady to take a pay cut affects the team. For me to be the number one tight end or the third tight end is like, less than a million dollars in cap yeah. space. It's, it's not moving the needle when I was playing. Now with Kelsey and these guys, they make a lot more. But back when I was playing a top three contract at tight end, the difference between those guys wasn't the difference between the top couple quarterbacks, right? So when Brady's taking a big number, it splits. I was never amongst the highest paid guys because that kind of stuff, it mattered to me, but it never fueled me, right? It, it, to chase the extra million dollars a year was never why I did it. So I would sign contract extension, contact contract extension. I never hit free agency. I look back and think like what could have been, but the best contracts in the NFL are the ones you play every year of. And I was very fortunate that I never didn't collect on a year of my contracts. And that was there. I never made the most, but I always made it all. So now back to the broadcasting, like it, it's not, again, it's not the contracts, but when you look around to the other guys, like when I listen to games now, I listen to the color commentator. I see how he describes a play. I say, that's right. That was a good point. No, that's, he's dead fucking wrong. That's not true. Like, so yeah, absolutely. You're competing against those guys because like anybody who's competitive, they want to be the best. Who's the number one? Like, who do you think is the cream of the crop? Who do you want to be? Like, whose level do you like aspire to be on? You know, obviously the, the, the top three guys are the three who call the A games, right? You got Collinsworth at NBC who calls the premier package. He's calling the whole country's watching Sunday night football on NBC. So obviously him, Aikman, Romo, those are, those are the big three. They're the you, A you crews can't, right there. The, he's the most, I, and you, I, you're never going to bet, but I mean, Romo is horrible. He's horrible. Yeah. I mean, what Romo, was he doing? It's almost like he, he's not what, I, I mean, I'm sure you watched the game. I mean, he's saying stuff. Talk about, like the Kelsey touchdown, he basically ruined it. He's like, oh, he's not in balance. Like, what are you, what are you watching? Like, you're not even, yeah. you're saying things that in big moments are so out of touch. And I know people went through, I think, the phase of him where he would like say what's about to happen with his knowledge of the game. He was kind of good. But I, I think Romo, and he seems like a nice enough guy, but I, I think he's, I love Aikman. I think Romo is horrible. Yeah, so, it, and people ask me this, and Mar- the quote you said before from that same Marchand interview, when those people ask, they're like, all right, what is your style? Like, who do you want to be like? I think the thing that I never, again, I never realized, I never really paid attention that much until I started doing it. And you're like, all right, now you're a lot more hypersensitive to how other people do it. Can you learn, you know, whatnot? But what I've learned is like, and, and I don't think it's by mistake, all three of those so-called top guys, the, the A's of those three networks are all vastly different. Right. When you listen to Collinsworth call a game, he's talking to the whole country. He's very casual. He's charismatic. He's fun. He's very light spirited, light spirited because that's his audience. Right. He's getting a very general football population tuning in at the end of the Sunday night for the prime game. Aikman is very serious. He's very smart. He's very cerebral. He tells it through the mind of a quarterback. He's very talented. He's been doing it for 20 some odd years. Romo is like almost the savant in his own mind. And at times he's so creative mind, yeah. and he's seeing, so, no, no, I, I really do believe Romo has some like very unique qualities as far as what he can see in real time, process it and spit it out. I think sometimes certain people don't like it, right? It's too much. It's process overload. 
He's saying too many things at the same time. When I watch Romo's game, I like it for certain reasons. When I watch Aikman's game, I like it for other reasons, right? Some people, when they tune in to my games, hate me. What I've learned in the sports broadcast booth, no one ever has a similar opinion on who's good and who's bad. Eddie, who would your crew be if you have to watch a game? I would probably go right now for the NFL, Aikman, and Buck. That would be mine, I believe. But you know who's my favorite right now in any sport? I love Sean McDonough. Love him. Yeah. I a lot of Sean, people like McDonough. I take him for anything. What do you what about you, Eddie? I, I think I gotta go with them, but I do think I think Romo is better than like you you oh. kind of trash. I think I, I like maybe he's just had some bad games. I thought he was awful. Awful. Like again, I, I think it's always it's in the eye of the beholder, but I just think all three of those guys and this is not just me saying this as like trying to be a nice guy. I truly believe all three of those guys are uniquely talented, but in different ways. And which is what makes when you, like I said before, when you tune into an Aikman, a, a Romo and a Collinsworth, you come away with a different point of view, a different perspective. And when I come away, like I love elements of their broadcast for three completely different reasons, yeah. but they are all three very, very talented at what they do. Which one do you prefer? Do you have one you prefer at least? You know, it's funny. I watch very few of the Aikman games just because, I'll, to be honest, I don't know if I watched an Aikman game this year because on a lot of the windows that we did, they weren't on because of the Thursday package. There was It was only every other weekend they were a doubleheader. I, I like Troy. The thing I like about Troy is he really tells the game from like a quarterback's perspective, a guy who's been there, a proven winner, you know, coverages, route concepts what's going on in the quarterback's mind that's when you watch at least when i watch an aikman broadcast those are the things that jump out to me just like how much he truly understands and knows what he's talking about and obviously buck is a hall of famer and, and, and it matters like a guy like buck and nance to a degree you have guys who have done big games for a long time have an inherent advantage because when you hear their voice it clicks big game like yeah. that that matters like it it there's certain guys when you just hear them, you're like, okay, this is a big game. You get juiced up. Um, but you, I, you, you were very good. I expected you to be very good at it. Uh, we disagree on the overtime thing, by the way. Totally. All right, let's have it. So give it to me. I get your point. Let each team, but I, and where I, the only so for those who don't know, Greg wants it. Each team touches the ball, right? That is that. What yep. is your solution? That's it. No, I, I have a few propositions, but I think in general, right, coming off that game, I, I didn't have a dog in that fight. I know you're a Bills fan. Ah, I wanted the ah, – Please, <laughs> Patriots. After the Pats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're a Bills fan when the Patriots are eliminated. Correct. Which has been – anyway. Um, oh, sorry. I'm just I mean, kidding. I'm, 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 I know, we know, we know. You won so many Super Bowls. Correct. Um, <laughs> no, so, like, it, there's not a person in the world – outside of probably some Chiefs fans who turned that game off on Sunday night and didn't think the experience would have been better if Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes both touched the ball in overtime. And, and the lazy response that you see from all these guys on Twitter, and I don't know what your thoughts are, it's like, well, you should have just stopped them. Well, no shit, but they scored 78 points. 25 of them came in the final two minutes. Neither team stopped anybody. So to say... Buffalo's defense should have gotten a stop. And well, Kansas City's defense didn't stop anyone. If there was another minute, Buffalo would have went down and scored again. It, it, so what is your just, solution? It's a stupid argument. So what is your solution? I think, I think the best solution that I've heard is the if you want to win on a walk-off, this would be a, this would be the only compromise I would even consider. If you want to keep the same format but just adjust it enough, the team who's so let's take the other night. So Kansas City goes down, Kelsey scores. Kansas City has two op two chances. They can either kick an extra point and then the other team gets the ball to go down to win or they have to go for two. If they go for two and they get eight in the opening possession, the game's over. So Buffalo that's the same that, that, that to me that's nope. the same basic philosophy. It's, you're just adding a two-point conversion, but Josh Allen still doesn't get to touch the ball. I said it's the only thing I would consider. In the perfect world, I think Josh Allen gets the ball and he gets to go down and determine how that game ends. In the perfect and, and, world, both of those guys uh, should touch the ball. So if he scores, you just keep going? I think if you score, you keep going. You play the, you play, you play the quarter like it's the fifth quarter. So you play – And you keep 
So, all right, I'll, I'll say what I think on it. I, I do think defense is just as important as offense. Now, that was an offensive game, but – like the Bengals Titans could have gone to overtime and there's teams you look at those old Ravens teams that won the Super Bowl they probably want to be on defense because you're going to kick you're going to get a quick three and out hopefully you get great field position how many of those field goals defenses how many of those defenses are are in the NFL this year making playoff runs in today's but, modern football well, I mean, the Patriots, the year they beat the Rams, that was like an, uh, almost no points in the Super Bowl. The Rams are a defense I think could slow down. But defense, like that that Titans-Bengals game, that was a defensive game. If that goes, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. In the, and since they changed the overtime rules to sudden death, that if you – from sudden death, a field goal, to sudden death, if you score a touchdown, it's over. And of the 11 playoff games – 10 teams who won the play the coin toss won the game the only exception was when the rams beat the saints so if we if we have the biggest games at the biggest times of the year you tell me in the regular season because we can take ties and all that shit fine give the playoff football there's no reason we should make your ability to win a game that was that competitive and that good if 10 out of 11 times in the playoffs you win the coin toss you win the game and the other team i don't know like how we think that's fair as just fans Listen, if I was the Chiefs, I'd be thrilled. I'm not apologizing as yeah. just a football Although fan. the Chiefs did petition the league to change it when the right. Patriots and that's scored. The, and that's the irony of the whole thing. Now, I, the, the change I would make, and the problem, not the problem, I think where football is a little different, like baseball, you can play a million innings. People aren't hitting each other. But it, I don't like the college for the NFL because I think starting in the 25 is radically different or the 20, whatever. But I, I guess a quarter, you just put – or 10 minute and, and whoever's winning at the end of 10 minutes. But where I think they probably get nervous is what happens is like, how long can guys play football for? I think that is. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's, I think that's totally real. I've heard a, a couple interesting proposals that to me are a little off the bat. I heard someone say, keep the same format, but in order to decide who gets the ball first, the team who ends regulation with possession, right? So hypothetically the team who's trying to go down, Either they kick the field goal in that case to tie it, to take it to overtime, or they're on a last minute drive. They fail. Game goes to overtime. They kick off. They go on defense. So there's no coin toss. There's no flip of the coin yeah. chance. The game just picks up where it left off. Yeah, I, I mean, thought that I was an interesting proposal. I'm inherently – I have no problem with the way it ended. I think, again, I, you, it, you do have a chance to play defense. But I won't argue. My, my solution would be you want to throw 10 minutes on there, play like normal football and see. Yeah, I'm I'd fine like that. with that. Um, I'd be that too. My, my, my entire prop – I'm open to any solution that you want Josh Allen. As a football fan, I want Josh Allen and I want Patrick Mahomes in a game where each team scored in essence 40 points. I want both those quarterbacks to finish that game because I'm highly entertained. That's at the end of the day, that's all this comes down to what's in the best interest of the NFL. The best interest is our best players should be on the field to decide the game. I don't know if we've talked about it, but I was the first Josh Allen guy basically in the country. I'll tell you what, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little insight. When I, when I chose to go to Seattle, because to play with Russell, obviously, because of how good he is. I look back now when I made that decision of just how good Josh Allen now, two years after that decision. And I think all the time, like what, what could have been in Buffalo, all my coaches were there. My tight end coach was there. McDermott, who was with us in Carolina. Like I sit and watch these last two playoff runs. And again, I don't regret it. Like going to play with Russ and like that whole thing made so much sense at the time. And I don't look back on it, but the what could, the could, shoulda, woulda. Two years ago, you know, you go to Buffalo with all your old people from the Panthers. Little, you know, he in essence was the MVP last year after, you know, the year before kind of being up and down. Who do you, I, I, who's, I could have made that wrong decision. The league, I, it, we've talked a little bit about it and it's impossible. I, I, how do you rank the young, I mean, the AFC quarterbacks are like ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think Mahomes and, I think Mahomes and Josh Allen are at the top. I think based on just resume alone with accomplishments, Mahomes probably gets the nod over just pure talent. And I'm not just being a creature of the moment based on how good he was last night. I think Mahomes is as talented, his ability to run, design runs, scramble, throw the ball. He's talent wise. I think he's at the top of the list with anybody. I think you got to give Mahomes, 
then Josh Allen, not too far behind. I think Herbert and Burrow. I think the AFC right now is just killing. I mean, their quarterback situation for the next decade is absurd. Mac nope. Jones. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Mac Jones. How, um, how, how bad do you think uh, Aaron Rodgers' legacy got hurt by that last week? I'm not going to lie. That pained me to watch all those guys on Twitter fire off cheap shots from the nosebleeds because – no matter how you feel about the vaccination, listen, this has nothing to do with his summer potential holdout. This 100% has to do with him not being vaccinated and being vocal about it. And anyone who makes his backlash. Wait, what about, are you talking about? The backlash that Rodgers has undertaken this season of people calling him. 100%. Out whatnot, 100%. Uh, but I'm, right aside now, from that, I mean, all right. I, no, I let me, the, the reason I'm prefacing it is saying I've been a Team Rodgers guy. Now, listen, I'm vaccinated. Like, Again, not to like throw a who's who and whatnot. Like my whole thing with Rogers is whether I agree or disagree with him. I love that he has the balls to stand up there and say, this is how I feel. I don't give a shit if you dog me. I don't care what the backlash is. Like I respect that because I know at times in my career, I bit my tongue and I knew in my career, I backed down. Yeah. You won't even let us fucking do seventh floor crew. One of the all time True. pussy moves, but True. That- so my point is to watch him walk off that field was tough i think when you look at the numbers and his home playoff record and all that it pains me but i think he's the most talented quarterback physically of all time his record and only having one super bowl is is tough i mean i think and i and i like aaron i that 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 was a tough loss that's a tough loss yeah, it's a tough loss i i feel the same way and i like aaron a lot i it's a it's a bad loss. There's no other way to put it. Had yeah. to be happy for Robbie though, right? Oh, Robbie Goldman, he's the best. That dude, the second he walked on that field, it was over. Who do it you? It was over. What is your uh, Super Bowl prediction? I think I think Kansas City's got the easiest path. I think the Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is a fun story. I think Burrow's fantastic. I just don't think they're good enough. I think their offensive line struggles. I think they're going to have I think they're going to have trouble against Kansas City. I think the winner of the Buffalo Kansas City game was I, I again agree. was my thought they were going to the Super Bowl. I think I think the Rams I, I think the Rams now have what they were missing a few years ago when the Pats beat them. I think I, I really like Stafford. I think he's really good. I think he's uber talented. I think he's in I, if I had to pick one coach to take to coach my, if I was an owner of a team I'd pick Sean McVay. He'd coach my team if I could pick one guy from from today okay. moving forward. Yeah, Fair. I don't because mean like in history. You, yeah. I'm saying you're saying because like today, Belichick's old. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't know if Belichick's gonna. If I if I bought if I bought the a team today and you said all right, build your team for the next twenty year, ten years, and you get your pick of any, and we do a, a head coaching draft. I'm taking McVay. He's thirty seven yeah, years yeah, old. That's fine. He's young. I think he's charismatic as hell. I think he's the rare mix of charismatic can deliver a message demand a room the players respond to him but he's also super uniquely talented x's and o's game plan strategy i think those are very two qualities that not a lot of guys in the league have i think they're the representative and i think that's a hell of a game I, it's hard to i think if kansas city plays like they did the other night their defense gonna have to be a little bit better if they're gonna beat la yeah, I, I think the Rams can beat them. I think their defense I do too. can slow them down, get pressure. I do too. And I don't care how good a quarterback is. It never changes. I've seen it with the Patriots, all through Brady, with anybody. If you get pressure on the quarterback, it, I don't care how good he is, that changes it. Um, so, last subject here. Are we keeping you busy? No. I mean, checking the phone. Just sending pro- a quick, I'm just it's sending a text. probably fucking Mikey podcast and that rat. Peter, whatever I'm just trying to is. send a text message. I'm sorry. I, I got other things I'm, on my plate here. You know now Kid, I'm the... F- kids home from school. I mean, I got a lot going on. I'll try to hurry up. You know I'm the face of the uh, Miami now. Hey, so let's talk about that. I I'm love the face, that you're I'm at the, the game. F- I'm the face let's of... Let's relax on face. Let's relax. Do you want... Uh, you missed this Are early. you talking about the University of Miami or the city yes. of Miami? University of. Got it. Do you know I that... I love it, dude. I love it. <laughs> so... I went to the Miami Florida State game the other day. Did you I see Cristobal? Did I see him? I was introduced to Cristobal. They introduced me as this. This is Dave Portnoy. He's going to do a ton for the program. I'm like, what? I didn't, I didn't even know what they're talking about. So this is all start with Danny Boy Kane. 
Do you know Danny Boy yeah, Kane? I, I, so, know him, I know him on Twitter, yeah. Like, and through us, who we yeah. followed. I was not yeah. attacked by we, He's been one of my favorite guys forever. Dan, Big Cat, and I, he's our golden goose, our Moby Dick. We've been trying to hunt this guy for two decades to get him to do stuff with us. He started doing these Twitter spaces about Miami and Miami recruiting. So Dan and I jump in and do it. Yeah. And he's got, uh, do you know the Ruiz family here in Miami? For, I, I, I don't know them personally. I know who they are, yeah. Yeah, so they're in these Twitter spaces. They're doing all the NIL deals. So we're yeah. talking with them. We're meeting with them. Next thing I know, I'm getting invited to this game. We're courtside. I, somewhere lost in it is people like at the university, which I like. I'm in Miami. They, they're taking a dead sit. Like this, I, they haven't figured out it's through Danny Boy Kane, but I've become like a major player for the University of Miami now. I saw you in the student section. I saw Crystal Ball running around. Yeah. That was amazing. It, the it, fact that you didn't you give me a heads up and be like, dude, come on down to the game and I'll show you around. Uh, you would have done that? Uh, you didn't ask. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. They want me to come to – and my girlfriend goes to Florida State. She's on – she's getting pissed. There's actually a picture. Do we have the picture? Put up the picture of her with Chris. Chris Ball's getting the crowd all jacked up. First of all, she bought this shirt. It's a Seminole that is choking Sebastian. That's they, a popular shirt. They called me, and they're like, she can't wear that to the game. I'm like, I'm not telling her that she can't wear that to the game. Do <laughs> Why? We have, because the Miami gave us the tickets, and they thought it was insulting. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Do we yeah, have the picture? because they gave you the tickets. There's been some good shirts over the years, man. My, and Miami feels like they're in the middle of them all. How how connected are you to the school? I'm I'm more connected with Cristobal. So Cristobal was my. So I actually got, look at that. That's See her picture. right next to doing the U down. Oh, that that can't happen, dude. <laughs> On TV, I <laughs> dude, know. run your house, dude. Run your house. <laughs> it's tough. Have some respect. No, so my so I I had limited connections with the university over the years. I didn't know Manny well. I didn't know a lot of the people there. And obviously we cheered for him, but they weren't very good. So when I went down, so my rising 10th grade year, Butch Davis was the head coach at Miami. Greg Shiano was the defensive coordinator. My dad and Greg knew each other from high school football back in New Jersey where Greg played. So we, me and my older brother, we went down to Miami. Cristobal was the offensive quality control with Rob Chudzinski, who was the tight end coach. So that all those guys were down there together. So then when I went to Miami as a freshman, Mario was in Rutgers. So Greg Schiano went to Rutgers up in New Jersey, obviously recruited all of us living in New Jersey. So I knew Mario from early Miami, then for a couple of years um, at Rutgers. Then Mario replaced Chud when Chud went with Butch to Cleveland Browns. Mario came back and he was my tight end coach. And then when I graduated, when I left and got drafted, Mario became the head coach at FIU. So I, I've known Mario since I was a 15 year old kid. I took my boys out last year to a couple of years ago to Oregon. We've kept in touch when he got the job. I finally feel like I'm back now, like with a connection to the school. So how does that work? Did you talk to him since you got the job? Oh yeah. I've talked to Mario a bunch. Yes. Yeah. So does like he reach out that you always hear that with new coaches getting everybody back. Does, is that how that he like reaches out? Like, Hey, Greg, come because to me, that's always important for and i think you see it with what dion does at jackson state it's like the nfl experience this is where you go to do that is that yeah how he's so how did that connection like he reach out to you try to like, yeah I mean, are, we that's gonna, always, are we gonna that's, see you yeah i mean that's always been kind of miami's claim to fame right miami's always hung their hat on the alumni i mean even when i was there you know and on any given day a dozen or so true like nfl stars not like guys just hanging on we're at the school training with us Every day, if we had a seven on seven at any moment, Edrin James, Clinton Portis, Andre Johnson, you name them would be out there as NFL, all, you know, pro bowlers out there working out with us in the offseason. So that was always kind of Miami's deal was that the players, the alumni were always around. Um, I, I'll be honest, I kind of I, I just didn't have a real strong connection with the staff and really anybody. I mean, we gave some money, humble brag to build the indoor, the, in, the indoor bubble and all that stuff. But um with Mario there, like I've talked to him, we've texted, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to be around a lot more. I'm going to go down and visit him in spring ball and spend some time down there. I, I'm a huge believer in Mario. I'm more of a people versus a places thing. Yep. Like when Mario was the coach at Oregon, I loved Mario. So I, I wanted Oregon to win and I love Ryan day. I've met him through some buddies. So when Ohio state plays, I want, you know, like I like people. 
The guy, he was born on third base. <laughs> the guy who was born on third base, exactly, according to Bar Harbaugh, yeah. who's so happy at Michigan, he's hoping to leave. <laughs> well, he's just negotiating. <laughs> he for just more loves money. his Michigan job. He's just trying to take the Raiders' job. Well, that's a rumor. Uh, <laughs> so then, if you're in Miami, I'll have to see. Yeah, it, it's. Oh, uh, I'll send you a message. Yeah, all right. I, I don't have anything else for you, Greg. Just don't steal any more. I feel of like our, we co- yeah, I feel like you cover a lot. Guys. Just don't steal any more of our guys. Is there anybody who just give me a list of the guys who are off limits and I'll make sure that's who I target? Yeah, all of them. All of them are off limits. You, get, you, get, you think you know a guy and then you get, you get hey, poached. Hey, blink, blink if you guys are being held hostage. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate it, man. All right. Talk you got to you it, buddy. Bye. Thanks, Appreciate Greg. it, man. Greg Olson. I love Greg. That was great. That was that was an awesome conversation, I thought. Um, so we're going to do some inside bar stuff. I think Alex Bennett's going to come in. Uh, let's talk about Masterworks before that happens, Dave. Masterworks. Shockingly enough, stocks aren't the only thing that goes up over time. To be debated, it is a bloodbath. Uh, turns out art can too. Well, we knew this. Listen to this. My last... Last May, a Picasso painting sold for $103 million. That's a 1,400% increase from when it was auctioned in 97. I'm like fully now, like I'm going to end up, whatever this is, I'm in. They already sold me. A 1,400% increase from 97 to last May. So what if you can invest in paintings without spending millions? Good news is you can with Masterworks. The $1 billion tech company analyzes tons of data to find great paintings, makes them in- investable on their platform. It's genius. This is genius. I need this. All right. In fact, early investors got a net IRR of 30 plus percent in 2020 and 2021 from the sale of two paintings. I love what this is brilliant. I love Masterworks is doing. You get priority access. Just log on to masterworks.com. Sla- Wait, masterworks.art slash Dave. Masterworks.art slash Dave to join over 300,000 users. That's masterworks.art slash Dave. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash disclaimer. You, Do you have this heard added? Non-do- yeah, you've what? never heard of non.com websites? No. Let me type it in. Masterworks.io masterworks. slash disclaimer. Yeah, it works. It works, yeah. I gotta check this out. IO is a is a domain. It's the real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you buy. Um, I I I love this. This is really what NFTs are based on, except the original deal, real art. Hang them, dude. I learned about those the other day. Those are crazy. Those NFTs. Yeah, Silvana. She doesn't she knows nothing about NFTs. She saw one she liked. I was gonna try to get it for. Her. She's like, "What is this? It was an NFT. I know nothing about it." And I tried to get it. And I couldn't. And I have a million people in NFTs who try to get me to get one of their NFTs. Because I think the way it works, you try to get like well-known people, influencers, what have you, to, to invest in an NFT, the collection, it brings more credibility, it makes it think it go up. So that's yep. the point. And I'm weirdly like a perfect guy for that because I'm involved in stocks and business and then influencers like I'm the right mix. I've never done it because I don't. Do totally... you know the guy who bought your pizza review, the Miami with the guy with no arms? Yeah. He's like one of the biggest whales in the NFT game. How do you know that? Because I, I, I went to a buddy's house and I'm actually doing a dog walk on it uh, tomorrow. And he was showing me how it all works. That guy's held it since. And he trades. A, a ton of value. I know. I, it, I talked to him at one point. I'm like, why don't you resell? Because if he resold that for a lot more, that opens the whole thing. He's like, I'm willing to, but I don't even know how to try to do that. Yeah, he's a whale, dude. That guy's big time. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. I got to re-reach out. But anyway, but ours isn't like art. Ours, I guess it kind of is. But um, I didn't. So I reached out to the company. I'm like, I want this NFT. It hasn't launched yet. And because I figured they give it to me. I'm like, I'll promote that I got it. Like, I just want it because she wants it. I don't know why she wanted it. She thought it looked cool. I'm like, do you even know what an NFT is? She's like, yeah. Well, I'm like, what are you going to do with it? She's like, well, I'll put it on my wall. It's like, you don't have to buy it to do that. You can just screenshot it and put it on your wall. She's like, but I want to know I own it. So she kind of got it. Long story short, I guess when an NFT does a launch, you can't specifically pick. You randomize which ones you get. So I Yeah, it's like... 
It's like a lottery. It's kind of yeah. like a uh, open a car, open a pack of cards. Yeah, I didn't know that. So it's like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. out. I, that's the only one I want. And I'm not going to promote it if I don't get that. And I don't want people to know which one I want because then they'll charge me more for it. So long story we- short, I didn't get an NFT. But this is but pre nft I'd rather real art than an NFT. Are we actively trying to build up our page? I saw there's a couple part of my take things on there as well. But like, I don't know if you saw what Nelk did and how much they yeah, just they, made yeah, off they of made it. Shit ton. I don't even know what they were doing. They're like events or something. Well, yeah, it's a called a utility NFT. So like you have like, uh, so if they have like a Super Bowl party and it's anyone's like holding their it's thing. It's like Barstool Gold. Essentially, yes. But we didn't make but, 23 million. I mean, that crowd's super rabid right now. So. Yeah, it's I'm, crazy, man. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, but this um, is cool. Masterworks. I'm actually going to check it out. I mean, I'd rather real art than an NFT. Yeah, that's fair. I love art, but I mean, it's all in the beholder. I, I have three paintings ready. My buddy, Trey Petro, best artist ever. I got a, it's another thing I want to do. Hey, you got a nice drug rug behind you too. That's nice. Well, that has nothing to do with me, but. Oh, sorry. Alex Bennett, how are you? Great. How are you guys? Good. Do you know why she's on? I actually don't. Uh, you said you wanted to talk to her, so I'm interested as Alex so, probably is. Yeah, no, Alex knows. Alex doesn't know. You don't know why you're on. <laughs> no, I, had, I thought maybe I would know, and then I assumed that's probably not it if I can't talk about it out loud. What? <laughs> Am I on about what we talked about on Thursday? Yes. Yeah, why would you take that off of a small platform and then put the same thing that we're not supposed to talk about on a bigger platform no it was already talked about you're a mean girl we what? have a mean we have a fucking mean girl working for us if i'm mean girl you're double standard dave i am not a mean girl what do you mean double all right i'm gonna give this story okay and eddie you can be the judge there's a okay. girl i know and she's fairly i don't know how big in the scale of bigness. She's not Kim Kardashian, but I guess enough people know her. She, no, you it, called her nobody. Compared to Kim Kardashian. You didn't compare her to Kim Kardashian. Yes, I did. You said she I wasn't did. a big deal. You said she compared was not a big to deal. Compared to Kim Kardashian. God, we should have, I should have taped the phone call. To you Kardashian. Big enough where you, you're, you do what you're about to do. So there's this girl. It's, we wore, it's, a, it's like a fashion account. We wore what? Her name's Danielle Bernstein. I know her. She goes to the Hamptons a lot. If I'm in the Hamptons, I probably see her once a weekend, once every other weekend. Nice girl. I know her. Fine. Didn't think much of it. Silvana is sitting next to me watching a video. And it's this mean girl talking to Jordan, um, who works for us. And, and they're talking about Daniel Bernstein. What Alex was doing, Alex at one point, I guess, lived in her building. And... She'd see the picture she took. This is what, three years ago? Mm-hmm. Saw the picture she'd take. And then when she posted them, she'd go into her comment section and tag Photoshopped, Photoshopped, Photoshopped. Like every time she took a picture, she lived in her building. And so she got blocked by Daniel Bernstein. And they're talking about it. And uh, uh, I just... Weird that I even saw it, but Silvana's watching it. And I'm like, oh, no, this isn't good. As I'm watching it, this isn't good. Like, I know the girl. She's doing this. And then the next day, Daniel Bernstein did text me. He's like, this is weird. Why are they talking? This is like years ago. Like, what the fuck? So I called Alex. No, we texted. And you thought I was joking. I'm like, what's up with this? Why are you doing? And we talk. And we go back and forth. And I'm like, you're a mean girl. She's like, I'm not a mean girl. She's a mean girl. And I gave her two options. You could keep the video up, but you had to say, I asked for it to be down, but it's like, I let our content people do our content or take it down. She ended up taking it down. But the point is, she won't admit she's a mean girl. Do you think that's normal behavior, Eddie? Do no, I, I mean, did I well, misrepresent the story, Alex? No, I don't think you misrepresented it, but before Eddie gets to decide if I'm a mean girl or not, I want to I want to clarify. Dave, did you watch the video or did just Silvana watch it? I saw some of it. Okay. But Here, I went on what you told me. I was going what you told me on the phone. Yeah, I All right, Eddie. I lived in this girl's building. I don't so I don't know who this chick is, right? I don't know who a lot of people are, but my friends start texting me. You live in the same building as this influencer. 
who's under fire for Photoshop. So they send me the photo. I'm like, oh, holy shit, I've seen her. Yeah, I know exactly who she is. I see her all the time in the lobby. So, th- so she'll post photos. I see her in the outfit, and then I see the photo of Instagram go up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is Photoshopped. Yep, she, like, she does Photoshop. Um, similarly, like, Khloe Kardashian goes under fire for Photoshop. Am I ever going to comment on I told on- you we talked about this. Hold this on. Is what you, this is what you said on, on the call. We didn't. Okay, so Khloe Kardashian also under fire for Photoshop. I'm not going to comment on Chloe's pictures, whether or not she's Photoshopped, because I don't see Chloe. Okay, so I don't know. I, I don't care if this chick was Beyonce in my building or Danielle Bernstein from We Wore What. All I know, yeah, she does Photoshop. True. So I'm commenting back to my friends. I'm like, she does Photoshop. She blocks me. The second image. I'm not in there trolling her comments. Number two, I get blocked because I'm using the word Photoshop. Jordan Woodruff, she works here. She has a series called Blocked. She's like, yo, Alex, you ever been blocked? Jordan sure have. Danielle Bernstein for Photoshopping. She's like, oh, okay. We talk about it. Sure, no problem. Those are all facts. So I go on there and I do that. Now, Eddie, additionally, imagine my surprise when Dave texts me and he's like, I know Danielle Bernstein, period. I'm like, uh, ex- and? I'm sorry. For like a guy that's pretty big on loyalty, you felt randomly loyal to some chick you see sometime in the Hamptons and you're telling me to remove a video where I'm talking about something that's true? You also mentioned Alex Cooper got caught for photoshopping, and you know what? She damn sure did, but guess what the difference between the two is? Alex took it in stride. She made Call Her Daddy episodes about it. She's like, I did photoshop. She went on Drew Barrymore and owned it. Danielle Bernstein's texting you to take down a video with 2K views? Like, But I know are her. Ca- are, I don't care if you know but her. It's like, what it's, if it's I know bars- somebody that... No, what if I know somebody that works at Cartier? But it... it- like what you're does that talking mean? about that. Well, Cartier like, reached don't... out. Yeah, and I took that down. I took that tweet down. But okay. when they reached out. But if I own the company, the girl reached out. By the way, I want to clarify something that is right off the bat. I've seen her a million times. She looks identical to her photos. I don't know what happened three years ago, but she looks exactly the same. There's no difference. So, but that's. I'll send that... you screenshots. I did my homework. I have some photos. I'm sure you did. My did, point. Of course. My point is. And when I said she's not the Kardashian style, it, it, it's like, I don't mind you text your friends. And again, you can do this. It's part of the thing. But you weren't, te- you, you were, hey, no, she photoshops texting your friends. She was putting it in the comments below her photo. So I don't think it's that unusual that she got blocked. Then you're talking about three years later. Obviously, she sees the video parcel is a big brand. She knows me. I would, everybody would reach out in that situation. Why would you? Res- it's what a true story, say? though, Dave. You, why don't you respond back and say, "Is it true?" If Danielle what? was the fourth square on here right now, I wouldn't apologize to Danielle. I'd put up a side-by-side photo and but say, "What's the deal?" But all I'm saying is, you're a mean girl. I'm not a mean girl, Dave. That's a mean I've girl. Only, I've been blocked one time in three years because I'm nice. I was saying facts. Uh, I'm not. But- a, no, 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 Dave. A mean girl says you're fat. Or you're not pretty. I didn't say either of those two things. I actually think she's quite cute and has good style. That's why I'm even more surprised she photoshops. That's what a mean girl does. I'm a facts girl. That's what that was. Those no, were facts. No, no, no. If, no, Dave, what, it's not what are you mean. Trying to say, what are you trying to say when you say she photoshops? What are you she saying? Photo- I'm trying to say she well, photoshops. What does that say? We talked about it. What does that say? You're fatter than that. You're not the same size as that. What does fatter. it say to a girl that looks up to her and then it's like, hey, Danielle Bernstein's photoshopping all these photos. So you're, like, you're, does you, she or not? So, does she photoshop so you're, or not? You're the, she does. you're the body image police. I'm not the body image police. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about a Kardashian. Or, I'm not, I don't fucking care. What I do care about is a person I saw with my own two eyes. Like, I can't sleep at night if I'm like, so, Chloe, so photo- you're, you're, Chloe you're photoshops. Her. I don't know. I'm not policing her. I lived in her building. And I'm like, yeah, she does photoshop. But, but you could face. tell your friends that. You could just text them. You leave them in the comments. You're trolling her. I'm not trolling her. I'm just saying what that is she does that, Photoshop. Then? Trolling somebody is going on and saying something that's mean. If I was like, she's ugly. She photoshopped Photoshopping down. is mean. Photoshopping's not always mean. I'm in for like a little so face tune or something. So if someone's she's under fat, fire, she's under fire repeatedly, constantly under fire for it. Uh, and I live in her building. I saw her. Th- I mean, wait, she this does. was three it's years ago. This was three years three, ago. Three, which I said in the video. But I she don't do, know. I, she, she does it now because she looks exactly like how she does. I'm telling you, she does. You would but, know. You see her every day in the Hamptons, and she's your best friend. That's what pissed me off the most about it. She's not my best friend. Then, Dave, why, why? You didn't go to bat for me at all. You were just like, Alex, remove the video. And I know you don't have a no, lot no. to go off I with g- me. I gave you two choices. 
you did you did give me two choices. What I didn't really want to. The choice I was say I, I listen. I don't want to see Danielle Bernstein in the Hamptons and be like, hey, you didn't remove it. It's like yeah, she wouldn't do it. That's what. See, that's like, where we're different. I'd be like, if I saw Julia Black, I'd be like that. Like, come on. Hold like, on. It's that's not, not that, a fucking not, fair comparison. It's not. A, it's not really a fair comparison, but it's that, not no, exactly it's not at different. All. I would go to bat for you, though. Like, you just were like, Alex removed the video. I'm friends with Danielle. I still bat in the for, Hamptons. It's like, wait, Dave, what? What do, you, what do you mean go to bat for you? Like, why don't you just tell her, is the story true? Sorry. Like, but bug off. It has 2,000 views. It might get 4,000. Like, Danielle, come regardless, on. It. Regardless if it's true or not. It's which it is true because I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't. I don't know if Chloe photoshops. I've never seen her. Going I know in, Danielle did at the time. I saw her going into a girl's photo and saying she photoshops is code for saying she's fatter. You left it in the comments. How do you not think that's mean? People write blogs here all the time based on assumption, and you let them. All, people are constantly blogging. That's the bar stool difference. People have an opinion, and most of the time it's an assumption. Mine wasn't even an assumption. It was a fact. I saw her with but, my own two eyes. So you're, I didn't say, I think she does. I'm like, no, she does. But Correct. Fine. But going into her comments is being mean. No? It's not, no, it's not being mean. You might, is it nice? Not necessarily. But it's they, mean. It's not, it's not mean. It is not Eddie, mean is for that me to mean? go in there and say now, that. Now, real quick, she lived in your building. Was there a rift beforehand? Uh, that like also elevator? makes it weird. Like, picture her or anybody. A girl in your building is seeing you and then going into your comments being like, Photoshop. I don't know how you don't realize that's me. Sorry, stop Photoshopping. Like, you're under fire. I think, if anything, get on there and own it. And oh, Jordan, you're sitting here. Yeah, because that was my video. Yes. Did you yeah. sub? Did you subtweet me yesterday? No, but I mean, wait, which one? Like you're sick of men running your life or something? No, that wasn't about you. But I mean, uh, if the who, shoe fits, Dave. Who was that about? My personal life. Okay, because we just talked about the whole. She has a show she wanted to do with Marty Mush and Marty Mush. Which, I, it's an interview show. We're going off the rails. It's an interview show that Marty Mush should have never had anything to do with. Because I've never seen two people interview one person. And Marty Mush is doing a million things. And Marty Wait, Mush was... You've never seen two people interview someone? Doesn't that what BFFs does, like, every week? No, there's two people interviewing me right now. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is like a podcast. This isn't necessarily an interview. Like, you were going to do a day in the life with. Yeah. An interview. We're not really, though, interviewing people, I don't think. I feel like BFF. This is more like a conversation. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to do as well. Like, it's a conversation, day in the life. Like, interview is so intense. No one really wants to see that anymore. A day in the life makes more casual with two people involved, different audiences. Anyways, I didn't think Marty should be. We can agree to agree. I didn't think Marty should be involved. Everyone I talked to, including Marty, didn't think he should be involved. But you didn't know Marty didn't want to be involved until Marty told me. And I, then I saw a tweet like, I'm sick of men, whatever. I thought it was about us. I, not, I don't want to throw Marty under the bus. I talked to Marty, and he didn't know that he didn't want to be involved either. I mean. <laughs> Receipts. I, I, I talked to him receipt. last night and this morning. Okay. Can we talk about your crew? Are you guys shaking things up over there? I feel like you guys are Wait, making waves. No, over I there. want to talk about blocked. I, Hold on, I, I will get. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll go back to that one second. This is from Marty, six forty p.m. Why are I you part? Why are you part of this show with Jordan? Feel like you are already involved in enough. Um, his response: I was actually going to tell her this week. I can't do it with gambling, everything else. She pitched it a while ago. It just came up. Got it. Uh, this is me now. Got it. To be honest, sounds like an interview show, so no clue why two people Wait, would interview Austin, one. Can you grab my phone? The green one. Got yeah. it. No, no. Marty. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Marty literally, he came up to I'm me not done. The show. To, to be honest, it sounds like an interview show, so no clue why two people would interview one person. Makes no sense to begin with. His answer, yeah, I agree 100%. I'll let her know also. Dave, he, he, it was his idea to do the show. I just read he you came to me when I first started. I just I read need the, my phone. I just read the conversation. It's pretty black and white. I need my phone. Marty Davis throwing you under the bus. Oh, that wasn't under <laughs> the bus. Austin, do you mind grabbing my phone? Somebody, too? somebody's not being truthful. 
I need my phone. I need to start taking my phone with me everywhere. It, I, it is, is, I don't know what kind of cahoots we have in this office with these girls, but like, where's Rhea and Fran? Like, there's no doubt what you did is mean girl behavior. It's beyond. Wait, why you are don't we jumping think that, all over the place? Marty, are you Hello. playing both sides of the fence here? Yeah. Okay. But I did say, oh yeah, I for sure did. I that. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I am. I'm I'm very bad at that. But I did, like I did say yes to her at first for sure. I was like, and I I liked the idea. I think it was a good idea. It was idea. your idea. My idea. Yeah, you came to me like my first week, and you're like, I think we could do something. Yeah, that's not my idea. I think we could do something. I don't think it's my idea. But regardless, I thought I liked the idea. But then I really did. I think I got too much going on, and I was gonna tell her soon because I'm going to. Iowa that week of a bunch of shit and I was like I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it that soon and I was going to tell her this week I uh, a thousand percent after we <laughs> okay. already got the the okay from the person we were supposed to yeah no it was a good I and I liked again who, I liked who, the who okayed that like who was the person we were interviewing oh, oh you mean Griffin yeah yeah anyways we can deal with that later I mean fine I that all I'm saying is yeah I'm over that all right so the mean girl. You want to chime in on her being a mean girl? She absolutely yeah. is. Yes. Alex yeah. is the only mean girl here is Dave for taking down a video we worked really hard on. She had the option. To, you, know, you know the option to oh, make the yeah, video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, said, I said as long as it's knowledge that I asked for it to come down, she could keep it up. I said that. And I what did you say? I said Silvana thought it was mean too. You're like, well, if she thought it was mean, it's gone. Yeah, no, I, I said you should have led with that. But yeah. then then I, you know, I hang up the phone and I'm getting, I got, I got like more, not sad, not upset, but I was like, that was messed up, Dave Portnoy. That was a messed up phone call. And I think it was a messed up stance for you. You're yeah. like, you're a mean girl. I'm like, God, I you like- You are a mean to, girl. I went to high school. Like, come no, on, we're in content. Not. I wanted to work at bar oh school. If that was God. a guy in the seat, this would never be talked about. What are you talking about? No, I mean, I could still, I feel like we could like, okay. If a guy was on her page being like Photoshop, Photoshop when she's posting and then made a video and she called me, I won't say it to the guy. That's lunacy. Hey, real quick, Jordan, were you, were you discouraged when Dave shot that project down? What happened? What's the aftermath from that? Well, I was just upset because I wish Dave would have came to me because this was my video that me and the person who helped me produce it worked hours on. And he just went right to Alex. And well, was like, Alex hey, said it. This down. It was my video, though. That's like me going to, like, you create this video, but me going to someone who's easier for you to talk to because you know them and be like, take that video down. Like, well, I no, wish Alex, you asked me. Alex said it. But it was my video on my channel. I just saw Alex talking about it. Kareem, the live yak, can you talk about that? Can I talk about it? Yeah, can wasn't that a thing? Isn't it, that why we wanted to have Hannah on? That is true. I mean, it's the same squad, isn't it? Uh, does Dave does Dave know about it? Yeah, Dave knows. What? That apparently Brandon Walker like was really mad something about his sister and at the live yak. Wait, what happened? I don't. This is news to me. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Kareem, Invol you know the involving best. Hannah Cook. You're saying? Yeah. What are we talking so, about? Uh, apparently, there was a live a live yak show and. Uh, Hannah Cook said to Caitlin Walker, Brandon's sister, that non-content people weren't allowed to hang out with content people and just a bunch of other stuff. And I guess Caitlin obviously wasn't too happy with it and Brandon also was not. And it was just kind of like a topic around the office. This is the first I'm hearing about this. I was the, the drunkest girl at the Life Yak show, so I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I was also very... I don't remember anything. I was like, Hannah, <laughs> Hannah told Brandon Walker's sister that his sister couldn't interact with content people. That doesn't sound believable. Well, Brandon is coming in to describe his version of the events because his sister's non-content, so she can't hang out with content people, so we can't put her on the show. But Brandon was more than willing to uh, explain, explain his side. Walker, what I just heard. Hello, hello Dave. I just heard this story is related to me. Hannah Cook, there's a Yak live show. Hannah Cook told your sister, who I don't know who your sister is or what she's here, but that she's not allowed to interact with content people. 
My sister books the travel. She was an intern until January 1st. She got a full-time job. She books the travel. Your and, sister uh, works at Barstool? She's yeah. the best. She's great. What the uh, fuck? She, she's been here a year. Oh my God. Um, Your sister has been working for us for a year? She's been, she was an intern for nine months, and she just got full time in January. Who the fuck's your sister? Caitlin. It's Caitlin. She does. She books the travel. Anyway, she's she, in the office. She's in the office. She sits over there uh, by, by me. Pete and Jen and, the, and and by Kareem. Yeah, very nice girl, I will say. Super nice. You've seen her many times in your life. How Definitely incestuous is this place? You can tell they're related. Uh, so anyway. Uh, my sister was at the Yacht Your live sister show. works at Barstool? <laughs> Has been working here for a long time. Yes, Mississippi is a very tough place. I gave her an opportunity. I said, I can get you an internship, but that's all I can get you. She took the internship nine months, and then she, she they gave her a full-time job. You talk to me the way you talked to me at that live stream when we gave your sister a job? Sure did, yep, yep, <laughs> sure did. She was actually an intern there. It was very risky on my part. Probably shouldn't have done it. You're lucky I didn't know that at the time. Well, is what it is. Wow. She, Brandon uh, she, Walker's sister works for Barstool. <laughs> she works here. She, she, she books the travel. And everybody likes her. She's not like me. I like you both, but yeah. Very nice girl. I've never met her, but she seems very nice. Wow. She's super cool. <laughs> okay. I can't believe that. Do you want the story or are we stuck? All right. <laughs> I, well, that was, that was like... Stunning to me. Uh, okay, just hiring people off the fucking street. Go ahead. No, no, no. She was an intern for nine months. She did her. She did her due diligence. She she paid her dues and she she got a All job. Right. Go ahead. So what's this story? Uh, so there was a Yak Live show. Uh, everybody went out afterwards. I went home. I don't drink. Uh, Alex Bennett right here got very 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 drunk. Fall down drunk. No, I didn't fall down. I fell asleep. Which but, I already said I was the drunkest girl at the live show. She, she got fall asleep drunk, and my it, it fell upon my sister, who was just there, to take care of Alex. And she was holding her, and she called her husband to come get her. Come get her. Graham. Called Graham to come get her. My sister was taking care of her and making sure she didn't fall asleep and fall, and fall apart in the club. I, I was already asleep, made sure I didn't die. So my sister had Alex's phone. Hannah Cook called Alex's phone. My sister answered. Hannah Cook demanded to talk to Alex. Alex was incapacitated. Hannah Cook then started uh, berating my sister and told her, you you're non-content. You shouldn't be hanging out with content people. It looks bad on us. And Hannah Cook then um, told her, whatever you do, don't video her. And that's when my sister said, I, are you stupid? I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm taking care of her. I'm not worried about content. So that's what happened. Mean girl stuff. That is mean girl stuff. I don't, I, I mean, where's Hannah? I just, she's not here, right? No. I haven't the, seen her, so. It's not funny. The mean girl was funny. Did you know this happened? <laughs> Trust me, I don't know anything that I, happened. I, this is the first I'm hearing. I mean, like that actually makes me... This was like the number one topic around the office, though, last week. I, yeah, not, everybody has like, talked about this yeah. story. I didn't well, I'm not going to be the one they tell. Well, that's true. I, that I'm is, not yeah. going to... They're not telling me that story. I sit next to you, and I didn't hear one person talking about it. I, well, I don't know what to tell you. It wouldn't surprise me with the Mean Girl Club we got going on here. <laughs> yeah, and my, my sister felt bad that she had to talk back to her, but, you know, she's... I don't, you know, I don't think she's going to get yelled at, so... I don't know why Hannah told her not to hang out with content. She was taking care of you. I'll Hannah is joining. I'm entirely thankful for because Caitlin. Because we awesome. got a fucking couple of mean girls in this joint. Uh, was I mean to Caitlin? No, you weren't. I was fucking, I love her. Hey, Brand awesome. Walker. Hey, I Brand Walker. A hug. Did, I, do you think if you go into another girl's comment section and repeatedly tag Photoshop picture, Photoshop picture, that's mean girl behavior? Let's give, let's give. What the fuck? Yes, that's mean girl let's behavior. Let's give accurate All context right. there, Dave. Yeah. Uh, what, let's what not just not like jump the what, gun. What is not accurate about that? All right. That's psychotic is what it is. No, I, I live in a girl's building. Who makes it worse. Know. That makes it worse. I think it makes it more real. I'm I willing to so own too. that. If I see her in person, I'm like, yo, Photoshop and a little, little dicey there. It's pretty, it's pretty significant. She, what, she does not like, Photoshop. I. I, I told you I'm down with a little. I'm in, I'm all in. Please. She do doesn't. It. She looks exactly like how she does in real life. Drastically different. You and I have the same experience. We've both seen her in person. Only difference is, you know, when she texts you, though. you're like, I'm in. Um, I told you it was three years ago, okay, and fine. I said that in the video, but you didn't watch, which isn't fair. Okay. I True. live in a girl's. Do we? Are we gonna get everybody's take on this? What's happening? No, we already went over. He already answered it. Where's Hannah? You gave no context. No, you didn't give him. Yeah. I, I, 
You didn't have, you don't have the real story. I, I got the gist that? of it. It's fine. I haven't seen Hannah. I don't think she's here today. She's oh, not in the office. No, she's joining via Zoom because she doesn't work in the office this week because there's no advisors and she lives somewhere else. Okay. But she's joining. Am I staying? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I can't believe your sister works. Uh, she's been here since uh, since last March, I believe, or April. Intern for nine months. Mm-hmm. She books the travel. <laughs> Peter Dews got hired. Alex, in I will give you credit. You're a very good arguer because Thanks. you're so on the wrong side of the law and you I, just are. I think you have to appreciate that I actually have a good point and you can't handle that. You're like, no, it's your mean girl. It's like, no, I'm not, Dave. You have a double standard. It's messed up. The video had to I come down. I don't know what that double standard is. I, uh, I, I mean, mean, we could talk about it for hours. <laughs> You know whose comments I go into? LeBron James. And yes, I don't okay, like well, LeBron. I'm, I'm, I'm and I don't like LeBron James. I, hey, I'm trying you know, to get under his skin. Could, could you, Dave, could you take that down? Could you stop that? It's kind of mean guy behavior. I mean, you're making no sense. My whole point I mean, is that I'm made tr- perfect sense. I think yes. everyone could agree that made perfect Alex, sense. Alex, I'm trying to be mean. That's why I go into he's his comments. He's actively going for that is what he's saying. Oh, I was just going for the truth, so sorry for that. Isn't there an element of how big Danielle Bernstein is, though? hundred like, percent. She's like 100 3 million followers. That's huge. Like that, That's what well, I mean. Dave called her a nobody. No, no, no. Three years uh-huh. ago? I, she's been around for a while, but obviously she probably didn't have 3 million followers three years ago. Zach. She auto-blocks Photoshop. What? what? That's not Hannah that's Cook. Not Hannah. That's, that's gas. Paul, have you heard this whole story? I've been listening. I'm actually... I talked to Jordan after her video got taken down because she was very discouraged. And I want to know if she's still going to be doing these videos because she's a little concerned. Jordan, are you still going to do the videos? I did one with Big Cat this morning. I'm doing one with Frank in 30 minutes. And I hope all those people get mad. But you were thinking about not doing them, right? Yeah. What's going on? Because I... (laughs) Another mean girl. Are you at a salon or something? Yeah, I'm getting my hair done. You are. All right. Yeah. So I just heard a story that Alex... Mm. Bennett, mean girl number one, got sick at Barstool. I didn't get yeah. sick. I fell asleep. You're telling wrong stories. And okay, time out. Brandon Walker's sister tried to take care of her, and you told Brandon Walker's sister she's not allowed to talk to content people. Excuse me? That's what has been told. I said that she's not allowed to talk to them? That's what we've been told. Um, Okay, so what happened was, is Alex and I do everything together, so we normally, like, leave. She doesn't have the Uber app for some weird reason, so we always leave together. So I was like, okay, Al, are you good? Like, I'm going to leave without you. You have to find an Uber or a taxi. She's like, I'm fine talking to Rowan's wife. Like, everything's fine. Then I get a call from her husband being like, where's Alex? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, you normally drop her off. And I'm like, well, I didn't. She said she was fine. And then so I called her and Caitlin Walker answered and I was like, hey, like, is she good? And she's like, she doesn't want to talk to you. I was like, okay, she's probably just hammered. And then that was it. So I'm confused where the no talking to content comes in. That's just a lie, complete lie. I, you didn't say you shouldn't be hanging out with her? Hanging out with who? Alex. Caitlin, Caitlin hanging out with Alex? That's the story that's gone around. I've oh. literally never even heard that. Oh, this is my hair. My, she's doing my hair. We, we understand. So somebody's oh, Brandon, not you, telling the Brandon, truth. So Brandon has beef with me right now? I'm crying. No, it sounds I like, well, care? it sounds like his sister hates you because you were rude, so he probably hates you is what my guess is. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was, I was scared because I'm getting a call from this girl I've never talked to before being like, I'm taking care of Alex, and I'm like, is she good? And I'm like... In fu- time out, I literally went up to her the next day and said, Caitlin, thank you so much for helping Alex last night. Why don't you bring her on? Because tell, tell, her, tell her to Is tell to my here? face that she said that. Yeah, bring her on. Bring her on. She's not I – I, can I just be the agent for her? She didn't, she didn't sign up for this. Well, she's going to lie then. Well, well time tonight. out. She, she's not – Time out. She didn't start, sign up for it, but it, it – somehow it's on this show. I'm How so did it get to this I've, point? We talk about I'm office ne- happenings here. That was the a very big office right. happening. Can so we, we confirm or deny? If you don't want her on the show, I'll respect that. That's fair. But can you, can you, no, what Hannah just said that she talked to her the next day and said thank you? Well, it happened on a Friday. The next day was a Saturday. So I doubt that happened. Was Sorry. A, so, so <laughs> Monday. 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 Sorry. Why would I ever be rude to a girl I don't even know? I've talked to her like once. I didn't even know who she was until she booked my flight to California this week. Well, if you were a mean girl. I'm not a mean girl. Have a seat. 
So she's really it. Well. All right, here's, yeah. here's my sister, Dave. Okay. okay. Nice to meet you. I didn't nice know that Brandon snuck this in. So you've heard this whole story. Yes. Snuck it in. So Hannah saying it didn't happen. You're saying it happened, I assume. Yes. Yeah. So, um, sorry, I'm a little nervous to be on camera. It's okay. You're good. Camera. And um, I don't want to make you into a thing, but we have a mean girl. All right. So you were taking care of Alex. We love you, Caitlin. She, she was saying, don't talk to content people. Yes. So what happened was, um, I was taking care of Alex. I called her husband and then I was waiting. I had Alex's phone in my hand and Hannah called Alex's phone and I answered and I, um, can we mute you? Can we mute her? I... Yeah. Hannah mute and unmute yourself when, yeah. So Hannah called Alex's phone and I answered and Hannah immediately, I said, Hey, this is Caitlin. She was like, why are you with Alex? She was like, let me speak to Alex. Let me speak to Alex. I was like, she's incapacitated. Like she can't talk to you. She had her head on the bar. Like she just couldn't talk to her. Way to handle your shit, Alex, by the way. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then that's like whenever uh, she started saying, well, you know, she's content. Like uh, you don't need to like video her, blah, blah, blah. Like um, basically I just felt mean girl the entire time. Like she was condescendingly talking down to me. Um, and finally I just said, like when she said that you shouldn't video her, I said, are you dumb? Like, I work at this company, too. Okay. Did, let's move to Monday. Did she... Time out, time out, time out. First off, if you guys want someone to, who heard the conversation, get Kat Ellis in here. I was sleeping at her house, and she heard the whole thing. So if you guys want me... I like, she, I was... Um, first off... Wait, hold on. Did she, what, did she come up Why would Monday? I care? Yes. Did I not say thank you for taking care of Alex? Yes, after it was all over, you asked me, you emailed me your phone number after it because I was like, look, I'm done with this conversation. I was like, you can send me your phone number and then you were like, just tell me when she gets home. And so you sent Time me out. your phone number. What, what, I never, uh, were, were you drinking? Was I drinking? Yeah, I was. I was going to say, was everyone just drunk and that's why this like got out of hand? I'm just confused. Like, I'm a, I, was, I have a very... Like, I'm not mean, first off. And second off, I have no clue where this is even coming from. I don't even know you. And then I literally thanked you on Monday. So, like, I'm so confused as to what you're, all, where, was, why was you even had this beef. Was everybody drinking? Yeah. Were yes, you drinking? Me. Yeah. Exactly. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, I was, but I wasn't drunk. Okay, so my only hearing all this, now I don't know how I'm, like, peacemaker here, but is there an element, even the way you just described it, sounded almost in the beginning as though Hannah's like, don't video her, which I get you being like, I'm not stupid. But like, if I'm there and Alex is passed out like that, I'm putting that on the internet. <laughs> That'd be mean boy shit, but okay. I, unlike you, I call a spade a spade. I would put I that was on the calling internet. A sp I was calling a spade a spade on the internet. But, but it sounds like that's what Hannah was saying. Like, don't video her, she's content. And then something went haywire. I was just looking out for Alex. And honestly, Caitlin, I literally have no clue where it's even coming from. I'm sorry if you ever got the impression I was mean, which is like actually upsets me because I was just literally looking out for Alex. Like, sorry. Um, I was the one taking care of her. I was the one there. And like, you could have come back. You could have been there to take care of her, but you did not. And you were mean the whole time. You mean girl me. I'm like, I'm going to sit here and say it. Like, you mean girl me. Don't let these motherfuckers talk down to you. Yeah, I'm crying. I, I literally know. asked Alex when She's she left. She's sitting there getting I her said, fucking hair done. I don't know. Why doesn't Alex I speak? don't what? know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Turns out Adderall and margaritas don't mix well. Like, Alex remembers nothing. I've said that. Like. I was in a, I was in a state of panic. <laughs> I'm like His, this. Her. Her right. husband calls me and was like, "Where's Alex?" I'm like, "I'm but like I, shook." I'd already like, called. I had already called her husband off your phone and like told him everything. Okay, so we got a new rival. I was you just, two hate each other. This is this is crazy. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't hate anyone because that's just petty. But I'm sorry she hates me. I hate I you too. I don't hate you. I do. Well, I hate you, Brandon. So we're all. I good. know. I hate you too, Dave. Question. Last question though. Was the uh, was the thank you sincere on Monday? Probably not. Well, I'm asking your sister. Your 
I mean, Why would I go out of like, my way? You came up to ask me to book you a hotel, and then you're like, oh, thanks for uh, taking care of Alex. And you said, cool, got your hotel booked. The All right, I'm just not going to say thank you. I'm just not going to say thank crew. you when you book my stuff anymore then. Walkers are like a what? tough crew. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ouch. Brandon? Thank you. Is that everyone? Bye, guys. Hey, uh, bye. <laughs> what a company. <laughs> What are we even talking about? The only thing I know for sure is Alex was a mean girl to Danielle Bernstein. Fact. That exchange, I, I don't even know Walker's sister, so it's very hard. I know Hannah. I don't, it seems weird. I, I think she's telling the truth, but I think she took it as a Walker can tend to do, a little more personal than it actually was. People do say they are know, like man. yin and yang, though. Like, they are complete opposite people. Like, you would not ever associate, like, you'd never think that they were siblings because they're that different of people. But what the story she even told seemed to be Hannah trying to protect Alex from being, like, put on the internet, being, like, obliterated. But do you I, think so someone would do that? Like, that. I would. If it was like Gaz and Gaz was just, like, 100%. completely. Well, all right, what maybe are you not talking gas, about? But... I've tried it like a million. I've done that plenty of times. Like if we go out and someone's sleeping or like shit, yes, 100% on the internet. We all do that, I think. There is a difference, obviously, with girls and guys and what, but yes. What are you talking about? I'm sure I, I can't think my brain, but there's examples. If you go out, you're capable of being put on the internet at any moment with our group. I remember Hank. Can you do it with rigs? Riggs, yeah, oh yeah, Riggs puking, like Riggs is puking walking out of 11. I couldn't get my camera out fast enough. Hank at Stoolpalooza fell <laughs> off a table. Like, yes, yes, I would put Alex. If Alex was like sleeping, oh, 100% I'm putting her on there. So is this crew on your radar now? I don't know. What the hell's going on with this crew? You, you got to get back to New York or what? No, I mean, whatever. I don't. It makes me want to stay here. <laughs> Who do you believe? You never take an opinion. Yeah, I, I would say so. I, I've I've never talked to Hannah. I've dealt with Caitlin. Caitlin was super nice. I do agree. She's completely opposite of Brandon, and that she's always a sweet girl. Um, so, I mean, if you're basing it on my interactions, yeah, I have no reason but to believe Caitlin. But obviously, they're the only two who know what happened. Yeah, and if they're, they're both drunk, I just think it's something that's maybe more personal. And this is going on far too long. Alex Bennett's a mean girl. That maybe not all the time. What she's saying she did is pure mean girl behavior. It's insane to say otherwise. What was Sylvana's take on it? Mean. Yeah. Like if somebody did it, that it, to Sylvana, she'd be fucking pissed and block them too. Yeah, I mean it's it's mean spirited to comment something to be blocked, right? Like that's what that's to my tag takeaway. your but, friends on multiple posts, being like Photoshop, Photoshop. When you're in the building, it's weird behavior. Mean girl. Now oh, she's what, an arguer, though. What, what, she could yeah. argue. What, now, do I care? Was I personally insulted? No. But do I know her well enough where it's like, hey, I gave her the choice. It's like, keep it up, but just say I asked for it to be down. And I'm not just saying it to say it. And I'm sure our crowd isn't huge like we were what or Danielle Bernstein. I've seen her a lot. She looks exactly like how she does in the pictures. I don't know about three years ago. Now she does. All right. I mean, Whew. what a fucking show. I, th I think people – are people going to like that segment or not like – I don't know. I don't know. I, I think – I mean, people seem to love the Barstool dramas. That's a, usually That's our best crazy. episode. So. And I've known Hannah for a long time. Maybe if she's drunk, she says, but I – like, I don't see her saying that. I Who don't knows? think Walker's sister's lying. Who knows, man? We'll keep, it, we'll keep an eye on it, but that's crazy. Um, all right. <laughs> that's show. <laughs>